Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. You see, it is the word of God that transforms. But I've shared it again and I'll keep drumming it until it becomes a persuasion. There is a system through which the word transforms people. The word does not transform people just by entering them and doing something magical. No, that's not how the word works. Write this word down, word, W-O-R-D. Is the Greek word logos and that word logos it does not just mean the speakings of a man right the the root word that is translated logos is the word thoughts please write it down thoughts like thinking thoughts is the word idea write it down is the word opinion opinion is the word paradigm paradigm and it is also the word mindset so when we say the word of god we are not just saying the things god is saying no we are saying the the understandings that construct his mind are you following me now when we say the word of God transforms, that word, word is not just the speakings of God, like his communication from his mouth to you. It means his ideas. It means his ideology. It means God's opinion about everything. Let me tell you how we are changed. When your life consistently keeps realigning to God's own idea about everything, are we together so you find out what god's perspective is about divine health and about the reality of you staying healthy and you compare that to your current state they tell you you have ss they tell you you have all kinds of sicknesses that destroy you but you find out his word is a compendium of his perspective about you and so he tells you by his stripes I am healed I have been healed if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead right dwells in your mortal body the Bible says that same spirit will revitalize now that's his opinion you can be aware of it and still remain sick or you can choose to subscribe to that new ideology and watch the Word of God come to pass in your life you see God is alert ensuring that all those who truly believe his word live with a testimony it may take a while brothers and sisters but as surely as you correctly believe god give him time there must be a performance in your life say amen i am amazed at how many believers think their lives will change just because they are born again 
I am more amazed at the preachers that teach Christians every week that all it takes to triumphant success in the kingdom is just to surrender your heart to the Lord and go to bed. That looks very spiritual. It is very evangelical. But it's not the accurate presentation of God's thoughts as far as our success is concerned. Something in that equation is missing. And this is why people get born again. And they say, I'm born again. I'm a believer. Why are things not changing in my life? Everything I used to suffer before, I'm still suffering them after. And I'll tell you why. Because you see, you receive salvation through faith, an act of God's grace. But there is a partnership with you to activate the realities. The Bible says that we draw out of the wells of salvation. Everybody say wells. Not just one. Salvation as a package is broken down into different systems of possibilities. Your finances, your health, your life, the operation of the spirit in your life, your spiritual growth. It is now left for you through the ministry of the Holy Spirit to walk with the word of God and change your mindset. Please hear me. I am, I am a firm believer that a believer who has refused renewal will experience the exact same thing with an unbeliever. The only difference is the security of his eternal salvation. But as far as the earth is concerned, there will be no, absolutely no difference as far as kingdom exploit is concerned. Are we together? Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in John chapter 3. And he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a man sent from God. He said, for no man can do these things except God be with him. And then Jesus responds to Nicodemus in verse 3 of John 3. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you. He said, except a man be born again. He said, he shall not, he cannot see the kingdom. He uses the word see the kingdom. Are we together? Verse 3. Verse 4. Nicodemus responds and says, ah, How can a man now be born again when he is old? Will he enter a second time into his mother's womb? Then Jesus explains his concept. Verse 5, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and the spirit, Then he switches terminologies. He says, He shall not enter. It's one thing to see the kingdom. But it's another thing to enter the experience of the kingdom. I call it prophetic realities and experiential manifestations. It is one thing to hold the prophetic word of God. It is another thing to enter the experience of it. Between thus saith the Lord and it came to pass is a process. That process is your degree of alignment. Please listen to what I'm teaching you. This will hold the key out of every life of pain and shame and mediocrity. Hallelujah. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you tonight? I watch people very innocently, well-meaning people, live under the expectations of God and they're not doing anything about it. Some are waiting for God to do something about it. So you hear people call and say, man of God, I don't know what is happening in my life. I serve the Lord, I go to church, but nothing is happening. And the biggest area largely is the area of finances. Nothing is changing. Is God so wicked? No, he's not. There are systems in the kingdom. Everybody says systems. It is for this reason that he gave unto some apostles. Listen, he gave unto some prophets. He gave on to some evangelists and pastors and teachers. Why? For the equipping, maturing, perfecting, building up of the saints. So that the saints will not keep misunderstanding him. God wants to be understood. There is something about the thinking of God 
that men do not understand and so he anointed certain people and said explain to people that i'm not the reason why their lives are that way there is an understanding they do not have listen he anointed some he didn't anoint them to be noisemakers he didn't anoint them to be offering razors he didn't anoint them to just be jeep drivers he anointed them for the maturing if you are in the fivefold ministry and you're not contributing to demystifying the kingdom you are wasting god's time on earth the role of the fivefold ministry is to present the kingdom make it clear let the inhabitants believers understand by the time they see the spiritual logic to god's system they will now say ah i see it's not that god is wicked i never knew that there is a system like this i never knew that godliness with contentment is great gain i never knew that my not tithing is what is authorizing the devourer i have prayed i never knew that as powerful as prayer is is not the only key to opening doors in the kingdom so the fivefold ministry by grace it's not just about their spiritual life there is an anointing that comes upon them and gives them an advantage a superior working of the spirit in their life gives them uncommon understanding to the working knowledge of the kingdom to the end that they will now call believers and say guys i found it i think i've seen the reason why you are not anointed ah uh, it's not just about prayer and fasting your motif and then the person says really i i came from a background that is not so good and um i'm naturally inclined to wanting power and wanting a, a sense of self-worth and you say no i've studied the kingdom and i found out that once your motif is to glorify yourself you cannot have the anointing are you seeing now the fivefold ministry you have edified that person so he goes back in prayer scans his motif and say lord i change my my mindset i change my understanding it's no longer about being a celebrity it's about seeing your kingdom come at once he satisfies the condition for the power of god that same person will have a dramatic encounter and go for a meeting and suddenly begin to see the power of god because someone adjusted his mindset what you are receiving and what you receive every week it's not just impartations it's not just encounters but you are receiving realignments the answers to your questions are being dispensed are we together now to the end that you will now find out why certain things may not be working in your life now it's up to you to be malleable enough and say lord i am the porter I i'm the clay you are the porter mold me to whatever form you can argue and say no i don't agree with this and then continue suffering or you can say look i have i have found the truth and i will adjust i like i like um what's his name that short guy the tax collector zacchaeus when he climbed the tree he was a wicked man he defrauded people because of his office as a tax collector but his motive was sincere now he climbed the tree i know why he was a wicked man because of his size he probably felt that they were looking down on him and so he had to amass wealth to cover for something so the issue was not finances the issue was trying to cover for inferiority are we together and he climbed the tree to see jesus and jesus said don't climb it's your house i'm going to jesus meets the man and at once he corrects zacchaeus mentality he says i didn't come to your house because you are rich i didn't come to your house because you are tall in other words it's not about those things it's about my love and my grace you did not qualify but i came to your house and zacchaeus said that means there's no need defrauding people at once he changed his mindset are we together now he started returning everything and said ah, my amassing money was not because i like money i was hoping that through it i will look like royalty so that every celebrity will visit my house now jesus has abused my mentality and he says there's no need for that old thinking we must be like zacchaeus tonight 
opening up our hearts and the moment the word of God comes you don't argue with it you see only foolish people argue with the word of God especially when you are not getting results in your life we live in a generation where people are confident to talk about things they know nothing about are we together someone who doesn't play football you see him arguing for three hours he says I know how much how we pay them this amount meaning his team and he never contributed anything and he never wonders and say come why is my life not working like the person I'm talking about people argue all around why should doctors go on strike and the person is not even a, he's not near medicine he doesn't know anything we like talking boldly about things we know nothing about and that's the danger we keep venting our ignorance but when we come to God he requires that we become silent that's what Mary did Martha was busy about commanding and talking and Jesus said Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things you are trying to get things done but one thing is needful and this Mary has chosen to do what? to sit at the feet there's something about being still in God's presence when he was about to feed the 5,000, he said, let them sit down. If you can't sit down, there's no bread for you. Sitting down is a sign of stability. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Oh, but Joshua Selma, you, I have bills to pay tomorrow. Sit down in green pastures. Your running around is not the solution. Let me tell you something. When we go through things, we think God is disturbed the way we are disturbed. And we say, God, keep responding on the go. And God says, I'm not going to talk to you. Prove you trust me by sitting down. In five minutes, that sickness. You are trying to rush and call a doctor outside. And God is saying, just sit down. I can address this issue. You can't even raise 3.5 million to go to India. So why don't you sit down and give me time and walk out of this meeting here? I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I respect the word of God. I will never argue with his perspectives. I'm not too proud to admit I am wrong. No, 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 no. no. Once the word of God challenges my ideologies, I say, Lord, I agree with you. You cannot be wrong. So I'm the one who is wrong here. Anyone who has that kind of spirit is on his way to an enviable destiny. Do you know how long it takes the average believer to adjust to the word of God? Until we exhaust all our options and we are convinced that there is no other way. Then we say, okay, Lord, what were you even saying? And God says, I've been talking for five years. When will you listen to me? Okay, Lord, I admit I'm 35 now. There's no husband. Oh yeah, let me hear what you have to say. And God is saying, sit down. It's not by hopping up and down. There is a secret. You settle down for six months and enter your marital life. You would have entered it five years ago if you paid attention. The day you listen to God, that becomes your this day. Your this day can be any day. He says, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. He said, today, if you will hear his voice. Let me tell you something. Time never changes anything. Time only reveals. The day you align to the word of God, that's the day your change starts. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, you are about to speak to me. I'm not rebellious. My heart is open. Go ahead and pray inside and outside. The online community, open your heart and let's pray. Shiba Kato Saba. Shiba Kurato Saprete Keti Baladaba. Mambros Kalabri de Shikrea Suparato Sabratia Labaradia. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light unto my path. Sing it one more time. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. 
Hallelujah. Aside from my personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and the privilege that God has given me to understand and know the person of the Holy Spirit, the next, I would say, biggest gift that God has given me is an understanding of the systems of the kingdom an understanding of the operation of the kingdom how the kingdom works the grace for performance that is on the strength of knowledge not just jacking yourself and say it will happen and mocking yourself understanding that produces consistent results and there are so many of them we've shared a lot of them in this house but in this series I took six of them six irrefutable laws of the kingdom that when you walk with please hear me when you walk and live by these truths when you allow the word of God to superimpose your thinking and it becomes your conviction and you are diligent to act I promise you there will be a performance hallelujah Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says and it shall come to pass in that day that if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I commanded this day not choose the ones you like to do and observe keep live by all these laws that I give unto you right it says that you shall be exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come to you and overtake you then he begins to tell you you will be blessed in the city you will be blessed in the country and all of that all those blessings but they are tied to your obedience they are tied to faith they are tied to your response which is a product of your conviction when you don't believe a thing you cannot live by it you cannot act upon it so we took some laws the first was the law of encounter and we spoke about complete surrender that was the first discussion that complete surrender is the law that governs the manifestation of the hand of God upon a man that every time you see a man a woman a man of God walking in unusual strange dimensions of graces the issue is not criticizing them the issue is not joining all those band of noisemakers calling everybody around town fake there are people who have this understanding the moment they see things they do not understand they see certain superior levels of graces they begin to criticize it once it is outside of their frame of belief how can a woman 35 years barren be pregnant you see that and they come up with you would you would think such a great testimony like this will be received by everybody until you discuss it among critics they'll say where is the woman bring her let's see her and the baby and let's have a doctor certify that it was 35 years as if the man forgot when he married his wife you see how people think so every time people see unusual levels of grace they usually will try to find explanations to discredit that is not as powerful as that but the key is complete surrender never forget this forget about great levels of the anointing when you are still conscious of yourself your reputation your anointing your sermon the quality of your revelations you will never touch the anointing that way are we together god will only truly anoint men who become reflectors men who have paid the price to be his image bearers they are reflectors of him not themselves a man of god who wants power to build a ministry and prove to people he's anointed will keep sweeping empty grounds and and and, and keep preaching to empty pews for the rest of his life because God is not interested in men making a name for themselves. The name they make is his reward. By uh, his reward for them being reflectors of him. 
Hallelujah. I have seen a lot of preachers come to me and every time they come, their first question is, what is the secret to the anointing? And they think it's just some magic formula. I'll say this and that and that, eat bitter leaf for one week, add cabbage. After that, pray, just put cross on your head for three days and get into power. That's charm. That's, that's not the way it works. It's not a charm you put in your pocket and then you just hide it in your suit. No, those who use that know what they are doing. But those who, you see, true power in the kingdom is a product of relationship. It's a product of relationship. You cannot receive from a God you do not know. You can receive from a herbalist you do not know. You can receive from a native doctor you do not know. You don't even have to know them. But if you want to receive from God, the first assignment is not your hand, it's your heart. My son, give me your heart. So we discuss that complete surrender as the key to unusual grace. Number two was the revelation that realities are only our physical reality is a reflection of a reality greater listen to this the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart his mind so he is i told you this law it is the law that births realities in our world that your physical life is only a looking glass are we together the quality of your life spiritually and otherwise is a reflection of something happening inside your life is not authorized to change until your mind changes. Anything that is not a reality in your mind cannot be a reality in your life. Genesis 11, God came and saw Nimrod, the son of Cush, mobilized certain people and said, Go to come, let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. The Bible says they burnt mortar and slime and bricks and started building. And then the Bible says God came to look down and see the building which the son of man had built god said as far as he was concerned they had finished the building because they had conceived it as a possibility right here your life will never change until your mind changes let me tell you the danger of trying to change things physically without changing it in your mind if one million naira enters your hand and there is a poverty mentality in you that mentality will adjust your behavior to force that money to leave you. And until it leaves you and you become poor, then your mind will interpret it as you being normal. Your mind will interpret wealth as being abnormal because it's not consistent with your beliefs. Are we together? Yeah. So you must make sure that transformation happens first within. You don't change people by just trying to change their physical environment i gave an illustration one time when i was speaking about transformation have you dashed somebody a shirt or a trouser that you use for three years is still looking brand new because your mindset made you care for it you always ironed it you dash the person the clothes and in two weeks a shirt that was white has become brown the person's mind is showing on the shirt are we together now yes you give that person a shirt. Ordinarily, you wear it for two days and wash it, or one day and wash it. But this guy has worn it for two weeks. Why? Because in his mindset, he says it is not necessary. Neatness is unnecessary. It's only um, an emergency. And once I am not sick, there is no reason why I should be neat. That's what his mindset is telling him. So he wears the shirt for two weeks until everything tears and then he throws it away. If the shirt has love written on it, you see that the O has faded or disappeared. Two weeks. It's the same thing that will happen to a corporation when you take the security man and make him the MD and make the MD a security man. You know, most people see wealthy people, for instance, and say, how can we be walking? We are the ones sweeping, opening gates. There is a wicked man sitting under AC, just signing papers. And his salary is 10 million. And we are here receiving 15,000. No, it's not the suit. It's not the AC. It's the mindset. If you want to know, switch them. Take the security man and keep him on that seat. Let me tell you what he will do. We've discussed it, right? He will still stabilize us. He will drink what is in the fridge. Because his mindset does not teach him that he has capacity to reproduce it. Careful. Hallelujah. That's alright. Let me have your attention. 
so with that kind of thinking look up please with that kind of thinking and that kind of faulty understanding what happens to the person you know, so it has to be in your life as it is in your mind people try to change their physical environment we use all kinds of things to change our mindsets so somebody can wear a suit and feel like a CEO but there's, there's nothing CEO there you see so there's nothing to deliver you can carry complimentary cards and move around and they say who are you? you say my name is this and that I am the CEO what is your value I don't understand what you're saying because for you to be a CEO there's something you should have gotten you ignored it and thought it was all suits how we fool ourselves we hate adjusting our minds but we love trying to fake it in the physical and Nigerians can fake things we can fake wealth you can fake as you people act as if they eat fried chicken and, and this every time whereas in their mindset they are living in abject poverty and they will not make adjustment and sometimes pastors in a bit to encourage people this is what we tell people act like your future and what what i understand what we mean we mean change your mindset but someone now says okay i'm hearing act like your future and hot son the person wears suit and tie and is moving say i am a ceo he carries a bag and he thinks i'm acting like my future and he mocks himself for 10 years whereas the first way to act like your future is to think like your future you must think like your future to become like the future so the issue is not going to borrow money and now start buying shoes of 10,000 and 15,000 when you cannot afford food of 200 naira the idea is not to create a fake outer environment the idea is to begin to give your mindset new informations and inevitably trust me trust me people I know what I'm telling you inevitably your physical environment will become a reflection of your mindset our physical environment is only a mirror have you seen someone stand before a mirror assuming i stand before a mirror and maybe there's something um, on my head or on my shoulder and i'm trying to remove it will i put my hand inside the mirror to change it i adjust it here and the man in the mirror adjusts the man in the mirror is this physical you the real you is the person within if that adjustment does not happen forget about trying to create change that's why people create temporal changes and then their mindset superimpose it are we together so i try to act as if i'm a christian i'm not serious about god and i'm not serious about the world but simply because i want to enter a relationship with a lady who comes for koinonia and she has told me if i don't come for koinonia no relationship i come and i fake it are we together while they are singing i watch people raise their hands i'm not raising it out of conviction i don't even know what is happening and after five minutes i say my dear i'm leaving this place because my reality tells me you are supposed to be drinking by eight o'clock you don't worship god by eight o'clock and you have programmed your mind to always drink by evening while worship is going you are just remembering that somebody can buy it free i don't have money but somebody will buy the beer free but you are in church just by force is the same thing pastors try to do to people be nice don't be bad why are you a bad girl change if she could change she would not be that way there is an understanding the key is not to tell people to change the key is to show them how to change hallelujah as it is within you so will it be in your life the bible says guard your heart with all diligence he says for out of it are the issues of life guard your heart don't allow any kind of thing enter your mind let me tell you why many of us are confused we are confused because the informations we allow into our spirits are not constructive you finish listening to a worship song right now two hours of strong worship are we together the moment you finish you have the selection you have gospel songs you have uh, all all the others you know songs like that 
well selected so when you want to feel spiritual you finish listening to the gospel songs and then you announce a kai enough of church i beg let me just hype myself and enjoy and now you put another thing you are you are diluting what you spend time you finish listening to the word of god and all of a sudden you just put a pornographic movie and you are watching and you are happy and you are laughing at the end of it you prayed for two hours but right now you don't even know what your mind is thinking again you 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 the goal was for your mind to think creatively but all through your mind is thinking about something you are trying to fight because you are feeding it are we together you are feeding it you go and sit down in the midst of people who are always gossiping you sit from 10 o'clock till 2 talking about people tearing down people and afterwards you go back and you are surprised that that is your entire thinking you have to protect your heart build a wall around your heart don't allow just anything find expression no no there are things i will never be found associating with not be i don't care whether they are good or bad honestly i am on a project i am well aware of how much my life would have changed if i were more renewed than i am now and i'm on a consistent project to renewing myself i'm not ready to sabotage that effort through carelessness are we together now please be careful what you allow in your mind you allow people keep talking to you you sit down and talk about somebody who became a millionaire in four months and say four months millionaire there are thieves in nigeria i saw one he's my neighbor let me i'm just waiting for that guy and you sit down let me tell you what you are doing you are associating wealth with negativism your mind cannot agree that you will be blessed because you have already castigated somebody and you have put a benchmark on yourself to never be wealthy so somebody becomes a millionaire in four months instead of you to find out what kingdom principle did he did he practice what sacrifice what happened no we don't argue we say no way it took me 20 years your father will tell you or your mother will tell you to buy my first golf how can a young man become a millionaire in one month 20 years one uh, four months it took you 20 years because of what your knowledge could deliver that's how long it took you to be in the labor room 20 years are we together there are different ways to get to lagos you can trek you can ride a bike are we together you can follow a luxurious bus you can have your private car you can fly you can take a private charter you can have your own jet you will arrive in different conditions don't don't ever make a mistake that you will arrive with the same condition no that guy who trekked from when Buhari won, that gentleman, they, they appreciated him, but have, did you see the guy? Yes. That's how life is with many people. We use all kinds of formulas that we think will take us to the place of destiny. And when we find people applying superior kingdom principles, rather than finding out, we argue and we say, no, this is the only way I know. That means that's the only way there is. Tell somebody there is another way hallelujah say there is another way please give us first corinthians chapter 12 the last verse first corinthians 12 the last verse hallelujah hallelujah god is changing us first corinthians 12 the last verse please everybody read it says but covet earnestly the best gifts uh-huh read on and yet i show unto you a more excellent way say there is a more excellent way the fact that you are doing it the way you know to do brothers and sisters hear me does not mean that is the only way you can do ministry the way you were taught in the seminary in bible school but that does not mean that is the ultimate way there is a more excellent way are we together you can manage your family the way you know you can try to know god the way you have been taught but there is a more excellent way and that's the way that the lord is teaching us that it is not all up to god and it is not all up to you it will always take partnership because the kingdom of god is made of systems and every system defines the operation of god 
in a particular way there is the administrative and governmental system of the kingdom there is the economic system of the kingdom are we together now there is the family system of the kingdom the area i was teaching the school of ministry students yesterday and fortunately we are, we are studying the course ministry and while i was teaching them i taught them something i told them i said when the devil comes to your life he finds out which operation of the system you do not understand that becomes his entrance point in your life so if satan comes to your life and finds out that you are a prayerful person he will not start his attack that way he finds out that you don't have a problem fasting and praying and studying the word you have already understood the relevance yet you are not an excellent person he uses your laps of lack of excellence as the access point to your life are we together now jesus said this satan cometh to me and does not find anything satan tried to access the life of jesus through different systems at first he tried to terminate him at birth it didn't happen he refrained himself waited for jesus when he was tired he now came trying to use hunger turn these stones into bread it didn't work he tried to use pride and ego are you not the son of god he shall put his angels charge over you even try to use spirituality jesus defeated him and the bible says he left him for a season watch this he now tried to come through peter are we together to prohibit jesus from talking about his death and resurrection jesus detected it and rebuked him finally he came through judas and he was allowed so that scriptures will be fulfilled not because jesus did not know the bible says after they took the communion satan entered judas and he went and caused made the arrangement for them to kill jesus christ the systems of the kingdom the area you do not know is the area the devil will defeat you in. and so i'm opening us up to the multifaceted dimensions of the systems of the kingdom to the end that we will be fortified not just spiritually not just financially not just maritally there will be complete and balanced growth number three i shared with us last week on how to receive direction and divine strategies there is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for helping men surmount mountains in their lives and it's found in proverbs chapter 3 when you read from verse 5 to 7 it says trust in the lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him and there's a promise tied to it said if you acknowledge him he shall direct your path right then you read verse 7 it says be not wise in your own understanding fear the lord and turn away from evil but the verse of emphasis is verse 6 in all thy ways acknowledge him and she shall direct your path that every time you are confused in your life which is normal for men we are human beings we do not have all the knowledge there are times you will be faced with mountains that are bigger than you listen to me please there are times you will be faced with all kinds of mountains financial mountains marital mountains educational mountains career mountains spiritual mountains health mountains there are all kinds of mountains before you and jesus is teaching us how to surmount those mountains he says every time you get to a point where you are in a crossroad you are confused you don't know what to do he says forget about the object of your worry and begin to acknowledge him flaunt his majesty remind him of the things he has done before and he's authorized to create a pathway number four the law of mastery and competence this is an operation of the kingdom that is responsible for producing greatness and rewards the kingdom operates on a reward system this is one of the fundamental laws of wealth one of the fundamental laws of relevance one of the fundamental laws of influence one of the fundamental laws of greatness the law of competence proverbs 18 16 it says the gift of a man i told you to write many things as similes of that word gift the value of a man the contributions of a man are we together 
the abilities of a man when well refined developed and deployed will make room for him will make room for him regardless of your background koinonia regardless of what you know and what you do not know when you find your giftings the abilities that god deposited in you and you pay the price to refine them they will bring you all kinds of rewards tangible rewards what are tangible rewards money and all the physical privileges that come and intangible rewards the sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that comes knowing that you are revealing the glory of God and that you are using your gifts to serve humanity it brings fulfillment but it happens only at the mercy of competence I'm building tonight right here when a man finds his god-given ability koinonia please listen to me i plead with you in the name of the lord jesus christ pay attention when a man finds his god-given ability he has found his way out of mediocrity he has found his way out of failure he has found his way out of pain and tears but your gift in itself although it came from god it always comes as a seed it always comes unrefined listen to me it will take that gift passing through a process of refining of development are we together now and of of mastery in dispensing it to be paid for and to be received and rewarded for nobody is going to bless you just because you think you have been having dreams that god is calling you to be a chef or to be a caterer have you mastered the cooking to an extent that a governor can call you or call your catering company this is the area i have problems with men of god because we never challenge people to be at their best they just bring little prophets offering for us and we prophesy and we lie to them because we know that their gifts the way it is someone comes to meet you and says i want to have a, a construction company how many years experience do you have nothing do you have a very credible engineer no you are the one who is the ceo of the company what did you study you studied fashion how does fashion relate with building stadiums and building bridges you are an entrepreneur do you have the required engineers no but he's my tribesman and they now bring one million for the man of god and the man of god said go it is done i told you last week it's not done don't let anybody fool you like that favor is when preparedness meets opportunity favor hear me is when preparedness meets opportunity you want a job but please and please before i prophesy to you have you done your homework are we together now you are trusting god for a job somewhere before i speak to you have you learned people skills have you mastered your art do you know your onions can you deliver competently don't come and ask me to prophesy into your life when you cannot you have not done your homework it's a mockery on god so god gives you an opportunity you have not mastered your cooking and they now tell you cook for 300 people the name of your company is goodness catering services that it has a spiritual name has nothing to do with the fact that good results will be delivered you now cook food for the 300 people and you make the person who recommended you to look stupid he did something to you as a favor because you are his church member but on your part you could not deliver before you start crying for favor make sure you have something in your hand well enough to deliver father give me a good husband have you mastered the art of being a good wife when was the last book you read and when was the last time you read it are we together oh god give me children what have you studied about parenting or you are just concentrating on trying to make sure your wife takes in 
have you studied on parenting you see many times let me tell you something get my teaching activating seasons of favor the lord taught me never to pray necessarily for opportunities because time and chance opportunities and seasons happen to them all one day like the hand of a clock your turn will come it must come but the key is to prepare so that the day you enter the presence of greatness you will never have to return again say amen competence i like you to say after me in the name of jesus i am gifted oh come on koinonia chorus it in the name of jesus I am gifted. I am anointed. The ability of the Spirit is at work in me. And I cooperate with God by refining those gifts. Knowing this, that a day of favor must come to me. And I do not want to abuse that day. One day, in the life of any man listen one day in the life of any man you will be seated before your destiny helpers it's up to you to deliver to the latter are we together i dread any time in my life when i would stand in the presence of greatness and would not have built capacity that is sufficient enough to open for me a door I dread the time when Koinonia will be 100,000 members and yet I do not have the leadership capacity to manage those crowds. Do you think God will give you? There are certain people God pegs them at a level because that's the only level that will make them relevant and yet spiritual. Anything outside that is beyond their ability to manage. There are people who can only manage anything less than 1 million. They have not trained their minds and their lives to be able to manage those kinds of resources. God will not give you 100 million. If you saw it in a dream, wake up. It's a dream. It is your capacity that will make it happen in your life. I, Daniel, understood by books. You must buy the truth and sell it not. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Refine your gifts. Write it down refine your gifts don't just identify them refine them they are the keys they are your bailout they are your bailout the concept of something for nothing is wickedness hello koinonia listen to me the concept of something for nothing is wickedness everybody rises according to their contribution our rewards in life will always be in direct measure to our contribution to want to become a millionaire giving the contributions of a pauper is wickedness that's why thieves are called thieves that's why we arrest them when we find them why because they use guns they don't contribute anything yet they want your money are we together so they bully you they say your money or your life bill gates is the way he is today because we can see his contribution you know why we insult politicians and we call them wicked they get their money by corruption we cannot see the value commensurate to what they have we see a man who is a local government chairman we do not see any developmental strides we don't see any entrepreneurial acumen yet we see billions in his account we know that that is questionable this is the basis upon which people are accused you don't accuse a man when you can see the value he's providing if i can provide the value of a billionaire you should not have a problem with billions in my account are we together now yes the question i want to ask you is that seat of greatness you want present to me the value that you are offering that authorizes you to sit there nothing for many of us are we seeing now a woman once asked me to pray for her i think she owned a school and she said things were not working the students were leaving and she said a prophet came around to pray he fed son he prayed and told her there's something somebody in another school one other mama that had his neighboring school that she came and buried a charm in in 
the, the madam's own school so that she would not prosper. When the woman told me that thing, I said, Madam, I minister deliverance to people, but I can tell you this is nonsense. That prophet, that, uh, the, 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 the prophet man, I may not call him fake, but I know that he's not seen clearly because most people use wizardry and wizardry peeps. It's in the Bible. He said, we are not like wizards, right? That peep. They peep into the realm of the spirit. There is no accurate knowledge. They summon strange spirits to deliver information for them, which can be aberrated. So he comes and the woman thinks the only reason why her school is not growing well. Why should I send my child to her school? Your school uniform alone depicts non-excellence. You don't know that colors are communicators. <laughs> check shirt, check, check short knicker. That's a school uniform. For instance, and then you put red or blue socks, carelessly done, with one tailor who is not competent, but is a brother to the principal. And so you allow the person to sew anything. You see someone very tall and his, 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 his trouser is, is just at, around his lap. No excellence. What of the teachers? The te I'm, not, I'm not being insulted, but the teachers themselves, look at the result of the person teaching them accounting. F9 in accounting, F9 in maths, F9 in economics, F9 in commerce. He's the chief. He's even the head of department of maybe social sciences. Why? Because they attend the same church. I'm telling you why people fail. There is a place for the spiritual. But never think incompetence will be substituted for, um, or competence will be substituted for, for prayer. Now it is that kind of school. You finish everything. The name is not good. There is no intelligent PTA uh, uh, parents teacher forum. They are always fighting. You are increasing the school fees every term, every session, but there is no commensurate development. You write YX, 60 people write junior YX, only five have up to five credits. The students are not so dull. The teachers don't understand what they are doing. It is that kind of school. You write in miracle service and drop it and bring a seed and say, Lord, that school must change. And every time you pray, God tells you, go and meet somebody who has the best school in a city? Usually those kinds of people, they fight those who are doing well because they think they are colleagues. We all have schools. What is, what is the name of your own? You are not delivering. Let me tell you what keeps people incompetent. Don't think because you are doing the same thing another person is doing that that means you are colleagues. Are we together? Yes. There are men of God I see, I know, I honor them with my life. I know that we are all men of God. But I know there are levels and there are standards. I will not sit down and say, oh, this... No, 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 no. Everybody is clapping for Joshua Selman. The same way they are clapping for me, I'm clapping for others too. Are we together now? But this colleague mentality is what keeps people incompetent. You have a supermarket. It brings you one million per day. You have a small kiosk. It brings you maybe 15,000 per day. You now sit down together. We are all wearing suits. We are colleagues. Are you doing the same thing? No. Are you getting the same result? No. But in our arrogance, we say, we the entrepreneurs. This guy has a kiosk. This guy has a shopping mall. But that humility to learn. There is a saying in Hausa that the person who can ask for road will never get missing. The, the keys to make us competent are there. It just takes meekness. But many of us are too embarrassed to improve. We are too ashamed to seek knowledge. Especially because that knowledge we want may come from those who are younger than us. Less privileged than us. So we don't submit ourselves to listen. I've been in ministry for 10 years. It's not working. But you say we are still ministry. We are part of PFN. We are part of CAN. A young man comes and in three years he's doing remarkable things. I said, forget about all those small children. He's young. That's why he's attracting his age mates. Have your age mates died? Why don't you attract them? Excuses that are reflectors of our, our lack of desire to move forward. I made up my mind. It's a vow I have made with destiny that in every area where the Lord wants me to excel, I will master it 
and I will lead the field. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are a preacher here, I'm speaking to you. Don't join people when they are clapping for you and saying, Joshua Selman, you are the lion of the tribe of Judah. They are destroying you. Thank God for their applause. But go back and say, it's time to walk. Be committed to personal development. You are a businessman. You hit your first million. You don't cross your leg and say, my soul, find rest. No. You say, the journey is just about to start. Thank God for all those things. But I need to learn. Who needs to mentor me? Who needs to build me? Champions are champions because they keep moving. Mediocres are mediocres because they stop moving. Give yourself to continuous improvement. Continuous development. Number five. The fifth law in the kingdom is the ministry of destiny helpers. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. May God bring a helper to your life. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. Please media help us. Mark 2, 1 to 5. I'm teaching you the fifth law that is responsible for producing champions. Giants in the kingdom. Will you open up the gates? gates. Open up the door. Will you open up the gates? Open up the door. Again, he entered into Capernaum. Please, let's read this down to verse 5. After some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. This is Jesus now. And straightway, Many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now something remarkable happens, verse 3. And they came unto him. You, isn't it interesting that the Bible hardly mentions the names of destiny helpers? It just says, they, certain men, a certain man, never mentions their name. But mentions what they did let me tell you something destiny helpers do not even know they are destiny helpers it says bringing one who was sick of palsy which was born of four that means four people carried him four destiny helpers carrying a man it says and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press what did they do they uncovered the roof where he was, Jesus now, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. When you read on, he was eventually healed. Watch this. Write this down. Destiny helpers are people who have been anointed, assigned, and commission to bless you and to take you to the next level of your destiny anointed assigned by God commission when Elijah was about to die of hunger in Brook Cherry the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said go to a city called Zarephath he said dear I have commanded a widow the widow never asked she never acted like she was commanded but god told the prophet i have commanded i have compelled her spirit to respond to you listen no matter how hard working you are no matter how competent you are in the dealings of god with men a time must come in your life when someone else will have to lift you please come shadrach shadrach is right at this level everybody please see watch this Call this a level in life. I am up here standing. His desire is to come up here. Now he has done well. He's played his part. Well suited. But he has the gift, the grace, the anointing. 
but no access are we together now he needs an introduction of a personality or certain personalities in his life called destiny helpers listen to me the assignment of a destiny helper is to take you from where you are to the next phase of your life please i want you to listen because some of us are at this level right now the truth is you have refined your gift the truth is you are competent but you are saying lord where is that man where is that woman who must speak there are three kinds of destiny helpers please write this quickly three kinds of destiny helpers sorry shadrach you have to stand okay go ahead just just write number one the first kinds of destiny helpers are called divine connectors divine connectors second kings chapter five divine connectors please give us from verse one to five second kings five from verse one to five learn this what i'm teaching you is not basic at all it's not simple at all it's a deep mystery in the kingdom that produces giants the first kind of destiny helpers are called divine connectors who are they let me tell you who they are they are men and women who do not have the physical capacity to lift you but they can they have access they can point you to those who can lift you they do not have the anointing to heal you but they can take you to a church where you'll be healed they do not have money to give you but they can take you to somebody who can help you they are called divine connectors their assignment is to connect you they don't have the power in themselves to help you are we together but they have access to an information that you need here is a situation a great man called naaman the bible says he was the captain of the host of the king of syria listen it says he was a great man with his master an honorable man because by him the lord had given deliverance to syria he says he was also a mighty man in valor but there was an area in his life lacking he was blessed spiritually blessed maritally but financially something was still hanging are we together he had excelled in every area but certain areas were still hanging and a miracle is about to happen to him verse 2 and the syrians had gone out by companies and had brought listen away captive out of the land of israel who a little maid you see no name again no name take note of this little girl because she's about to be a destiny connector it says a little maid and she waited upon naman's wife she was a pa to the big man's wife one day something happened next verse she said unto her mistress would god my lord with the prophet that is in samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy that's a destiny connector the little girl said i know i'm a i'm a captive but while i was in israel there is a man i know that that man is powerful i pray that my being little will not make you to not listen if you can please talk to your husband that he should go to that prophet i know he will be healed these are destiny connectors sam i know you have this talent but i was browsing and i saw that there is an international music auditioning i'm not a musician but i thought the information may be important for you certain men destiny connectors are we together now this lady had no power to heal the man but she knew a prophet Kai, who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody around your life that you have ignored there is someone who knows who will bless you but you have ignored them because they do not have capacity in themselves to help you let's run through this very quickly and one went in and told his lord saying thus and thus said the maid that is in the land thereof verse 5 and the king of syria said go to go and i will send a letter so on and so forth and all of that and when you read down to verse 10 naaman on account of in fact no 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 let, let's go to verse let's go to verse 8 
Can we go to verse 8? There's something I want to point out there. Listen. And it was so, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, because the king was afraid, right? And then Elisha said, let him come now and see whether, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Read on. And so on and so forth, Elisha came. Go to verse 12. Listen. Look at this. He had told him to go and bath in the river of Jordan. Now, historically speaking, Jordan at the time this man was given an instruction was not clean. Very dirty. Are we together? So the man felt at my status to go and bath. Watch this. He says, are not all of these rivers, you know, better and all of that? So he returned and went away in rage. This is where I'm trying to go. He was at the point of his breakthrough, but in anger, he was about to miss his miracle. The destiny helper comes again. And, the, and his servants came near and spake to him, listen, and said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee to do something worse, will you not do it? Somebody came and spoke to him. Are we together again? And said, no, no, let me encourage you. And that man went to bath. When you read 14 and 15, he bathed seven times. And his skin, the Bible records, was like that of a child, that of a baby. Destiny connectors. I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ. That God will give you the sensitivity to see that men may be ordinary, but they carry extraordinary things. Are we together now? They may be your younger ones. They may be children. They may not have the ability to bless you, but I pray that you have the discernment to listen to them when they speak to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The second kinds of destiny helpers are called men of influence. The second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence. Mark chapter 15 verse 43. Please give it to us very fast. Let's, let's be fast about it. Mark 15 verse 43. He says, Joseph of Arimathea, this was Jesus Christ now. Right? We, we shared a bit of this during our prayer and fasting. I'm reiterating it for, so that we can believe. Josh, um, Joseph of Arimathea, an honorable counselor. The Bible says, which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and used his honor or influence. He went boldly before Pilate and crave for the body of Jesus. Listen, there are men in your life who can use their influence to open doors for you and to endorse you before great men. You need them. A time must come in your life where you will need them. Are we together? Do you know that, please come, assuming this lady is looking for a job, are we together? This lady is looking for a job. She's tried and tried by the privilege God has given me to lead this ministry, we have very influential people scattered around who honor the grace of God in my life and I appreciate it. I can use my influence. Are we together? And meet somebody, someone like our daddy prof and say, daddy, please, there is a lady here, honestly. She can be good for a secretary. I endorse this lady. I know that this lady is good. Daddy, please, do you have any friend that can give her a job? Do you know he may not have planned blessing her, but because my influence is a middleman between two of them, he's compelled by his honor for me to do something about her situation. And this girl will get a job. Are we together? God bless you. There are men of influence. Those who preach and say you should not mind men of influence. Let me tell you what they are telling you. Remain where you are forever. Because it will take a Joseph of Arimathea to speak to the king for you men of influence men of influence i've shared the story here in koinonia true story that a, a guy who wanted to go to nda but there was a height level that he needed to 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 get to and he was short of it maybe by a few inches and they were about to deny him that opportunity and somebody who had connection to the emir of zazo here the emir of of of, of zari and all of that um came and met the gentleman and they wrote a letter no he didn't even write a letter 
he said they should go and tell the commandant of NDA that the emir of Zazel has added his height come on now that's called influence if the commandant does not act he knows what that means <laughs> to his daily bread to his career are we together look let me tell you influence is a force that moves men to their destiny don't you ever make anyone make you criticize influential people i pray for them in my life i want them in my life i desire them in my life one of the priceless things i learned about my father my father is connected to men of influence almost everywhere if it's police station my father knows somebody in the police station prisons my father knows someone if your car breaks down no matter the brand there is a mechanic somewhere my father knows it's an attribute in his life i covet earnestly are we together who do you know brothers and sisters that can bail you out of this wicked nigeria you can buy land as a born again believer and somebody can just come as a politician to bully you may god raise a man of influence to call him and say if you touch my pastor i touch your job influence you need influence in this life you see the people in the world are smarter than believers we sit down and keep praying in tongues and we fool ourselves you need influence bishop oyedeko is great today i know he's great as an anointed man but it's not just because he's an anointed man he's a pastor of influential people are we together if the managers of five banks are members of your church are we together your chief financial secretary is the is the is the ceo of zenith bank will you be poor as a church please answer me will you be poor as a church don't say it does not matter keep fooling yourself it matters big time in this country we live in you need men of influence many of our parents ignore them that's why they are suffering may god make you a destiny helper to someone that one letter from you to say no no i know this person in the name of jesus christ Amen. i want god to make me a man of influence i am very unapologetic about it i want god to connect me to politicians to connect me to business people to connect me to diplomats i'm not part of those liars in church who will say it doesn't matter i'm just a righteous man i have fortified myself i will still be holy with them and i will take advantage of the influence for the kingdom hallelujah when the former president i heard a very funny story i will only say part of it the former president uh, of nigeria did something funny to one prominent um will i call him father elder statesman in nigeria he did something funny to him and um within three days he received a call from about five presidents this is verified they all called him and said what are you doing we had you did so and so, so to this man he made a request you didn't grant it the president himself was trying to call the man to beg him he didn't even pick his call this is verified i'm not just this ah may god make koinonia a place of influence please answer that amen well in the name of jesus christ hallelujah men of influence the key to strategic kingdom advancement is key influence not just evangelism that you are surrounded by men that matter so that somebody will not come with a tractor and bulldoze your church because he thinks he has influence uh -uh. influence gives you a voice the bible says a rich man's wealth is his strength it's, it's a fortification you need men of influence around your life there's too much wickedness who do you know in the army that god can use to speak for you who do you know in the military who do you know in the banking system who has god connected you with in the area of medicine if someone is about to die do you know a, an influential consultant who can facilitate his papers to go to india you need men of influence say i need men of influence open your mouth and pray in one minute send them to my life send them in my life send them in my life 
Lord, I pray one man of influence can change the story of your generation. One man of influence. Just one. Some of you, that's what brought you to Koinonia. You are saying, oh God, I need a miracle. God is speaking to you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. You know, they say when they post you NYSC, once they post you and nobody can walk it before, once NYSC starts, there is no hope of you being redeployed. So they told you, in my presence, I have seen people four months in NYSC, carried away, not marriage, not pregnancy. Somebody used his influence and said, I need this person for his personal comfort to be in an area. It was quietly done. In ABU, you call it third list, but there are many lists according to what influence can bring. Are we together? There are people whose admission letters are printed overnight. Jam irrespective. Come on now. Cut off point nonsense. A voice is the cut off point. Influence. And God brings them. If you do not have men of influence, you will join the queue in life. And the queue does not move. That's the sad thing about the queue in life. There are too many greedy people in front of you who will not allow the queue move. Even when they have it, they won't give you chance. They will stay there till they die. So the hope of you moving to your place of destiny will be impossible. How many look at redeemed and living faith in every city, in every place they have land. Do you know there are territories that antagonize Christians? They will not give you land, but they had influence. They spoke to one allergy who knows what their prayer did for him and said, you better talk to your local government chairman to give us land. And they said, please, give my pastor land as an allergy, as much as he wants. That's what influence can do. May God give you influence. In the name of Jesus. There are many churches in Zaria who want to buy large properties. There are, there are lands around. But they may never give churches. They may never give certain people. Because they say, one, somebody holds it. No, 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 no. no. You watch what will happen in the name of Jesus with Koinonia. Let me tell you, everybody on earth is a tenant. Nobody has a right to bully anybody for land. God will give us land that will shock you. It will be as if they brought it from heaven and just say, pick. It will happen by the Spirit. I'm not one of those fearful people who will not move. The earth is the Lord. But you see, it's not just the voice of heaven from the voice of God from heaven. God will connect you to somebody. I have prayed for many unbelievers and I'm happy about it because they will remember my prayer the day I need their help. I prayed for them. If God gives them breakthrough, tomorrow we'll say, please, we need your influence to buy 10 hectares of land for Koinonia. And they will say, let it be done. If they refuse, the man will buy it in his name and sell it to us. Influence. Our parents rejected men of influence. Now they are paying for everything. Just to give somebody admission in secondary school. See how we fast and pray. Whereas one signature can answer that prayer. I pray for you from the depth of my heart. Any man who needs to enter your life, who has the influence you require, may the God that I serve bring them into your life. May the God that I serve bring them into your life. Please hear me. Every man on earth answers yes sir to someone. Are we together? If they refuse to tell you go ahead, find who they answer yes sir to. And they will answer yes sir to you too. He said for I am a man under authority. I am under authority so there are others under my authority. There is no man who is, no matter how people make themselves gods. Don't be threatened by men's noise. They only talk. Every animal claims to be the king of the jungle until the lion shows up. When the lion shows up, he doesn't say keep quiet. They will be silent. Whoever has robbed your family of what is their due, whoever has closed the door for you, there are many of us, your qualification can give you a job, but the people endorsing you are like you. 
so their words are not heard may god bring a, a man whose signature matters in the name of jesus christ there's no nonsense like a dog that is closed it's a mirage someone can open that door i've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy people i've had the privilege of meeting very influential people and i have seen the way doors open just like that i've seen doors open just like that i remember one time one of our chairman um the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general in the army i remember when he was a colonel sometime in lagos you know we are so close and every time from the airport he will send the military people with the car his car and then with military bikes nobody does any checking as soon as they are coming they just flash light and they salute them access because of influence who told you driver's license takes three months it is the general thing when my international passport expired the general himself he drove me sir with his car we went to passport office in abuja in kaduna i even did the first one in abuja so it was even complicated in 30 minutes how many minutes about 30 minutes or so they brought out my passport for me and i was ready to go the woman who did it the madam there last year i went to minister in nigerian immigration their fellowship their chapel when i went there there was a woman they had moved her there and quickly i made friends with her because my passport would expire again Keep laughing at me. Don't lend the wisdom in what I'm saying. Listen, when you see men of influence, don't resent them. You resent them because pastors have taught you. They are all unbelievers. Don't mind them. Mind them. Mind them. Just make sure their influence does not destroy you. But please mind them. Don't have that mindset of throwing men of influence and think every gate will open to you just like that. But the greatest key is to become an influence yourself when you become an influence you become a magnet to influential people oh that's why i love the anointing goodness 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 the anointing will bail you out it will make you an influence you will not just look for men of influence they will come to you the bible calls them gentiles it calls their kings he said they will come to the brightness of your rising the last kind of destiny helpers are faithful men faithful men men who will stay with you in the thick and thin 90 percent of the people you will ever meet in your life don't like you they come to you simply because of your gift and what you represent you will hardly find people who love you for who you are but in your life there are men you will find who love you for who you are they will stay with you for time's sake first First Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. Please let's hurry up. First Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. You reign, you reign. Hello, him, you reign. You reign, you reign. Hello, you reign. You reign. Hallelujah. David therefore departed thence. David was running away from Saul. Saul was about to kill David because he was termed a rebel. Are we together? Now David ran. And the Bible says he escaped to a cave, not a palace, a cave called Adullam. But the Bible says, and when his brethren and all his father's house had, they did what? They followed him to that cave. There are men that can follow you even when you are in the cave. May God bring them to your life. Let me tell you something. Listen, one of the most disastrous things for a leader is to not find men who believe in you 
when things are not going well they leave you alone when you are lonely but there are certain destiny helpers called faithful men are we together faithful men he said a friend is made for adversity there are many of us when you go through bad things there's nobody to stand there with you when everything works well everybody comes but there are a kind of destiny helpers called faithful men verse 2 and everyone that was in distress one that was in debt everyone who was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became what captain over them in a cave how do you submit to a man who is a failure how do you submit to a ministry that does not have results how do you remain loyal to a business that is not working? It's called faithfulness. There are such men. There are such men. We were discussing the other day with Ejimi about a particular man of God who had gone through rough times in his life and nothing had changed about his ministry. Not one person we know of influence had left the ministry because of what happened. And I said they are called faithful men. They are not called men of God. They are not called assistants. They are called faithful men. May God position them in your life. Yeah. How many great men in this country have fallen and they are left alone? There are some of us, when our parents were wealthy, there were all kinds of relatives. Now, right now, there's nobody to even pay your school fees because there are no faithful men. There are psychophants around in our world. But there are people called faithful men. The Bible says that he was captain over them and they were with him in a cave. 400 people in a cave there was no hope it's not like they were there hoping things would change they were saying if we die let's die with you God. if you are a leader here please let me give you a secret every time you pray don't just pray for gifted people pray for faithful men a faithful man is better than a gifted man a gifted rebel is not an asset hallelujah verse 3 and then we'll stop and david went thanks to the okay let's just stop there i'm not going to read let me give you the next verse to read first chronicles first chronicles that will tell you the whole story all till but but then we're looking at something else first chronicles 12 let's read 1 to 3 then move to verse 38 first chronicles 12 1 to 3 then 38 let me show you something very powerful about this faithful man Look at this. He said, now these are the men that came to David in, Zig in Ziklag. I'm fast forwarding now. He says, while he kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish, he said they were among the mighty men. What did he call them? Helpers of the war. So they had stayed with him even when he had now become mighty and was ready to fight. He trained them. They remained there. They had now become helpers of the war. And it lists all of them. Go to verse 38 for time's sake. Read with me, please, everybody. Hallelujah. Mm. All these men of war that could keep rank. Do you know what that? Hold on. That means when David told them, you stand as a musician, they remained as a musician because David said it. Absolute loyalty, regardless of results. Are we together? It says they came with what? A perfect heart. Nobody was doing eye service. They loved him genuinely. They were willing to die for him genuinely. He said to make David king. Their determination. They said, David, you don't need to bribe us. We, we are alive to make sure the word of the Lord in your life will come to pass. Do you know God can send this man with you? Everything in your life can nose dive. And they will come and say, Jimmy, if everyone will leave you, I will be here for you. Whether your wife gets pregnant or not, I am here for you. How many pastors are hiding many things in their lives? Because if members know, they will run away because they are selfish people. But there is a grace. I truly believe there is a grace that attracts faithful men to the life of a man. Watch the kinds of people you are attracting. And don't be too quick to say these people are my friends. We even say they are my right hand men. A friend is made for adversity. Adversity separates people. 
you will be shocked to see how many people will call you king of the Jews and crucify you tomorrow. But this guy said they were with a perfect heart to make sure a Jimmy becomes that CEO. With a perfect heart to make sure that Abiodun gets to that place of destiny. So even if they would die in the process, no problem. There are such men. Listen, he said, and all the rest also in Israel were of one heart to make David king. They threw away their own personal agenda and said, David, for as long as you are not king, we will not rest. Do you have such people in your life who will take responsibility and say, for as long as you have not gotten that federal government job, I will not rest. You can call and say, Kai uncle, you have tried. Don't worry, God is faithful. You say, God is faithful. I take it as a ministry to make sure you become gainfully employed. And they will run left, right, and center. While you are sleeping, they are awake. They are saying, help my son. When they captured Reverend Ntia, Ntia is in Akwaibo, Ibom Uyo. When they captured him, Dr. Paul Enenche said he could not sleep. Because he's not just because he was his spiritual son. He said no, he began to engage certain forces and he started making calls all around. Called his spiritual parents. Oyedepo, they called Adeboye, called federal government people and called people and said, you better look for those assassins and release Intia, Intia right now. Dr. Paul Enenche went himself to a choir bomb and went to prophesy on that soil and say, I command that my son be released. Faithful men. Is it not enough to pray from your house? When a man leaves his house to your own to help you, it's no longer just friendship. It's called faithfulness. Pray in one minute. Lord, bring faithful men. I'm tired of false people in my life. Take what I'm saying seriously. I'm teaching you mysteries that will make your life flawless. Faithful men. Faithful men. Even when they know what you have done, they say it will never change my relationship with you. Pray. There are businessmen who crash just with one scandal because everybody around them is a psychophant. There are pastors who crash with just one rumor because there are no faithful men. It's a terrible thing to live your life building men to and then realizing that they are not faithful. Make sure you are praying. Shabaka labako sotobai. Lord, bring faithful men to my life. Shimbra kabarato sopalaba. Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus had a crowd just like Koinonia. He was teaching them. They were there for different reasons. One time, he taught a message that was too hot for them. The Bible said they started leaving. There were only certain people, his disciples that stayed. And he asked them a question. He said, will you not also leave? And then Peter, Ayah. he said, to whom shall we go? Don't you know we are sold out? To whom shall we go? He said, you alone have the word of life. And when they were crucifying Peter, theologically, historically, they kept Peter and were about to nail him. And Peter said, I have one request. I know I will die. But I'm, I'm not worthy to die in the same position with Jesus. Turn me upside down and let me die. Faithfulness unto death. i like you to pray. Especially those of us who are trusting God for marriage. By the time all you have in your life is a man who just wants you. Because of figure 8, you are in trouble. By the time you have a woman who just likes you. Because you have money or you are working in shell, you are in trouble. Lift your voice and say, faithful man. Faithful man faithful men pray shabala kabara da bala da bala da bala da bala da bala da da bala da da bala da bala faithful men faithful men anointed to stay with your vision anointed to stay with your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many people who pray for me the prayer department prays for me my parents pray for me 
but there is a woman you have never seen the woman i met this woman in a meeting and the woman said she had a revelation when she listened to my message she said i have entered a covenant with god she said i'm an intercessor i've entered a covenant with god that until i go to heaven i am an intercessor for you and your ministry god is i've never given this woman one naira god is my witness you can ask the protocol and all those who follow me they don't even know the woman i have never given her one naira once in a while she'll just send me text and say my son just know your mother is praying for you i tell you there are times i'll be trusting god all decisions and her text just comes faithful people they will never ask for money they will never ask and say when you get there it's chop by chop they 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 see it as a ministry to make sure you prosper i've seen people like that with all humility and by the grace of god one of such people is our daddy here i remember when um there was a time that you know we're looking for the venue for ministry and all of that do you know daddy took the responsibility single-handedly there are still people here they they would ask about koinonia as if it's even their ministry it's like they are more concerned about it than me i sent a text to a few people telling them we're trusting god to buy land you know to, to to get land and all of that and one of the women sent and said i've been waiting for this she said i've been waiting for this make sure when it starts my contribution comes in she said i will be offended if my money is not part of the money that is used to buy land faithful men a pastor may have nothing but faithful men and i tell you he has more than assets he may not be able to play the keyboard well but he's faithful he will die with you are we together there are people who were once in this ministry today they have left some of them are abroad they are the ones spreading koinonia messages around i don't know them but they take those messages all around it's an anointing that is upon this ministry faithfulness i tell you we don't force people to do anything here there is a grace i saw it in certain ministries i pursued it like a man pursues water when I found it, I got it and I knew. Many of us have too many disloyal people in our lives. You are not sure of anybody close to you. They will laugh with you now. And when they turn, they can say crucify him. Let me tell you, no matter how careful you are, you cannot make men faithful by yourself. It will take a heart under God for them to vow and say, I love this man. I am loyal to him to death. There are people today, if they bring a gun to shoot, they will stand and receive that shooting for me. I know that. Not everybody, but there are people. You need that in your life. Because you are there Facebooking people, chatting with people and saying, you are my best friend, you are my best this. They will leave you. Let me tell you something, when the going gets tough. Because in every man's life, there are valleys. There are times of challenge. How many wives left their husbands simply because for one year, there was no money they packed their load and went how many husbands left their wives and started looking for another small girl simply because after five years she could not give them a child faithfulness is important don't think i'm joking when I, when we are saying this please i want you to pray again and say lord in my life send faithful men i told you they are anointed they are commissioned they are anointed they are commissioned they don't just come they are sent. Send faithful men. Send faithful men. Hallelujah. Number six, please sit down. We're rounding up. The last key that controls undeniable results and impact in the kingdom. This is probably the greatest of the laws that I know. It's called the law of honor. Pay attention. Somebody's life is about to change. The law of honor. Matthew chapter 10 
verse 41 and 42 there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results in the kingdom listen i'm establishing the law of honor the law of honor is predicated upon a revelation that there is an anointing hear me there is a grace for every dimension in the kingdom results do not just happen there are graces that activate possibilities there is a kind of grace that brings influence there is a kind of grace that brings wealth there is a kind of grace that brings freshness are we together now so that's the first thing you need to know about the law of honor that there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results how you know there is a grace working is when the result becomes consistent regardless of the opposing situations when a result becomes consistent there is a law and a grace at work number two human beings are god's reservoirs of spiritual anointings spiritual graces god keeps his anointings in men not in jars not in goya oil they can just be prophetic contacts but god's instruments god's instrument for hosting his anointing listen he that received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what look up did he say shall receive god's reward there is something called a prophet reward is the reward that goes with his office are we together it is the possibility he can release to you in honor of the god he serves and the office he represents and it does not just mean a man of god it's a law every time you see a man walking in a dimension consistently regardless of opposing forces there is a grace making that i have seen people in my life they are not very wealthy but they never beg i don't know what kind of grace that is the moment supplies are about to finish something else comes they never have one billion but they never lack if they need to travel abroad someone pays for the visa i've seen these people very strange people they kneel down and say lord send help from zion and men are rushing they will not bring one billion they don't have 20 cars they may just have one or two cars but you will come to their house you will never beg for bread it's a grace are we together when you see a ministry exploding in membership there is a grace when you see people moving from one dimension to the other there is a grace you can see a lady who may not even represent what supposedly most ladies may think brothers want in sisters yet you find 10 12 15 brothers flocking around and everybody saying this and that she can say no i'm in a relationship he say close that one and come to me I'm, I'm ready to whatever it takes and you are wondering come my brother is it that is it that this lady is gold he says me too i don't know it's a grace are we together that lady will leave that ministry and go to another one where nobody knows her and the result becomes the same there are people when they ask you something you can't say no you you swear heaven and hell and say this is the last time i'll give anybody this this lantern they just knock and say Ejimi, please can you help me with it you stand up like a zombie and pick it there is a grace there is a grace I have seen this there is a grace that brings a healing anointing in a ministry it's not just by faith there are people who have these graces now listen to me please your life revolves around the levels of the possibilities you have activated i wish what i were saying were a lie i would have quietly apologized and just sat down but this is true it has changed my life it is changing my life 
it has changed this ministry it is changing this ministry the law of honor is the cheapest route to greatness the law of honor i used to think service was the cheapest route until i learned the law of honor my goodness you can quantum leap your destiny in one day you can veto imperfections in your life by practicing the law of honor it has worked in my life like a charm the bible says he that received a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward he that receives a fruitful woman in the name of a fruitful woman shall receive what a fruitful woman's reward he that receives a millionaire in the name of a millionaire will receive a millionaire's reward the keys that made him what he is listen you can men are dimensional that you are close to a man does not mean you have exhausted his dimensions there is joshua selman the human being there is joshua selman the friend there is joshua selman the man of god are we together there is joshua selman the businessman there is joshua selman the whatever it is there is a dimension you have not seen if you only know me as a man of god you receive that reward if i become your friend you will have access to certain things that people will not have are we together if you come to see me in the capacity of a man of god you can sit down i will open my fridge and serve you because you are coming as a man of god but if you come as my friend when a jimmy comes to see me whatever i'm eating is what he will just pick it and keep eating he has he is not going to ask me we will even talk about it he wants malt he can open the fridge and carry it and we'll take are we together because we are friends are we together but when we begin to talk we align to the relevant dimensions that reflect the graces we carry when i'm talking to my parents we can crack jokes but when i'm about to say something serious i switch because i'm talking to men who brought me to this world they have an anointing to speak over my life are we together you can see me greet our daddy and just crack jokes but when i'm about to talk to him i talk to him in the capacity of the grace he carries are we together now that's why you see us do certain things like some of our elderly ones we don't let them just join the queue they sit down these things are communications of honor that's why we provide buses for you after the service it's not just that we have money to throw around no it is to honor you it's a law of honor because it is our belief in this ministry that everybody seated is carrying an anointing and most of those anointings we need it and so we honor you to receive it are we together now yes you want a car you see somebody who has a car you buy fuel you are receiving him in the name of a car owner you will get a car owner's reward you see someone in a relationship you don't keep gossiping about his relationship you package a seed and sow into his life and sow into that lady's life and say whatever made you get this good man whatever made you get this good woman you got this woman when you were not born again meaning it was not your effort this is grace i need it you sow into that life you are walking someone is not walking and you are saying is it teacher that i'll sow into you see so you never rise one day you get up in the morning and wash the person's clothes and iron the clothes and he gets up and says ah my roommate what is this for he said i didn't iron it as roommate i'm tired of joblessness i'm tapping into the grace that frequency in the spirit that afforded you opportunity out of the millions of jobless people you got a job how many barren people have honored those who have children they will criticize them hallelujah an anointing you have dishonored has run away from your life an anointing you have refused to bring into your life through honor maybe the reason why you are grounded hear me i'm rounding up you saw a prayer grace in koinonia and you felt please these guys just pray too loud they just shout like idiots i like the excellence i like the word but the prayer and so you find out that you pray for five minutes and snore your life away because you ignore that grace it's called the spirit of prayer and supplication you saw grace for 
an accurate understanding of the word and you criticize it that's why those who criticize great men never become great you see why our parents are sincere but the way they are they criticize every preacher on tv they criticize every actor they criticize every government worker when they watch news everything is criticism they insult everybody who have you insulted to your detriment whose anointing have you resented let me tell you the key to activating the law of honor number one you must believe in god number two you must believe in the vessel who is the carrier of that anointing you must not just believe in the person you must believe in the office the operation of that anointing I, I pray for you that you get this we're about to pray but you need to get this for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you Lord I will reverence you Lord I will reverence you Lord for in your presence there is life everlasting I will reverence you Lord. listen I have followed men and women who have carried on common graces not just in ministry I have I have I have honored them with my life I saw into different TV ministries because koinonia will soon have their own tv ministry i never open my mouth and criticize anybody's tv ministry because somebody is going to be watching our own soon so i plant a seed of honor are we together now yeah i sow into the lives of people's children because i'm planting a seed of honor for my own children i don't want my children begging for school fees begging for bread so i take care of other people's children that's why I don't kick children and throw them out here. I take care of them. Let me tell you something. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, without fail, except for the mercy of God, he will receive it. We have criticized people. You have not started ministry, yet every man of God does not have rema for you. You are in for a shock. In for a big shock. You have not started business yet you look and say kai this guy he's talking 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 it's as if he's by luck if he built this company continue talking no reference for people's sacrifices let me tell you something behind every glory there is a story if you do not respect the story and the glory you will never replicate it in your life never ever never ever there are people by the grace of god who i have never met eyeball to eyeball i've heard about them they have reproduced the grace upon my life verbatim every anointing you see is yours for the taking but the key is honor honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands let me tell you something honor is not kneeling down lifting your hands you have heard that there is a favor anointing in this ministry I don't know whether you believe it or not there are many people who never believe it so you will sit down with circles of disfavor whereas people are recording unending testimonies of the hand of god by the grace of god everything we do in this ministry prospers is a grace have you tapped into it is it working for you listen as a faithful person in this ministry you should be a reflection an epistle of the graces and the anointings that are here don't let people come from somewhere you see how people behave when they come from other places their hearts are open they are not distracted because they are coming only for a few hours or a few days and going back but many people just sit down koinonia koinonia and they enjoy and after the grace they stand up and walk away proximity to an anointing 
does not release it upon your life it takes honor honor is the spiritual magnet that brings graces to people me and Jimmy were watching a man of God one time and I looked at this man of God I said Kai this guy carries an uncommon grace for wealth an uncommon grace he's not so fluent he's not even so intelligent you know that there are many business principles this guy does not know but there is there is an uncommon grace this guy had 10 cars in 10 weeks one one every week uncommon grace and we said no this guy knows what he's saying i will not criticize such a man i will listen with my heart open i can ignore his imperfections and get what i need listen anointings do not flow through perfect vessels Joshua Selman is not a perfect vessel. If you are waiting for perfection, you may never enter certain levels of grace. Ignore the imperfections and get the anointing. We are going to pray. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Shabala katabara to say. I will reverence you. I will reverence you. There are things that were not in my life before. I know they were not there. I knew when they came. I honored my way through them. Honor is not human worship. Honor is not even giving somebody offering. It's just a communication. The honor is a recognition and a celebration of the hand of God and the sacrifice of that person in the secret and in the open. There are men of God I will never talk against in secret and in the open. It doesn't mean I agree with everything they do. Honestly, I don't. However, I honor them with my life. I'm not ashamed to declare that they are custodians of certain levels of grace. You receive it. We have resented people. Little results in our lives. But we are very quick to resent people. You see a lady getting married and you look and say, Ah, and she's not fine. No, the way God does his thing, Seth. That's what your eyes could see. What you just said in the realm of the spirit is I dissociate myself from this experience. That's what you have said. Every time you communicate dishonor, that's what you say. Lord, I dissociate myself from this experience. We are going to pray six laws i have given you you will play them like a computer game and watch your life skyrocket you will you will tame life like a chess you know how people play chess life is not magic it's not chance as haphazard as it is there is a synergy there is a rhythm to life i pray in the name of jesus christ that you see everything i've been saying it's one thing to hear what i'm saying but it's another thing to see it he says i will stand upon my watch i will set myself upon the tower right he said and i will see what the lord will say to me some of these things i share with you freely i got them from my own mistakes i got them through pain i got them through sacrifice but they are irrefutable laws bring any man for me walk these laws and what Satan bow, what gates open by themselves. I don't care whether it's gates of finances, I don't care whether it's gates of health, I don't care whether it's gates of ministry, gates of business. There is nothing you are doing that has not been done before. Ask those who master this key. If he's setting up a company, you are not the first to do it. If it's marriage, you are not the first to do it. If it's barrenness, you are not the first to be barren. The day your light comes. That becomes your day of salvation. Something I have ignored. I used to do a lot of things and allow people punish me. There was a man of God that set me free. Just one revelation from him. I could go and borrow money and come and help somebody to be careless and run into debt at the expense of the carelessness of someone because I felt I had to be everything to everybody. And one day, one man of God delivered me. His name is Dr. Mike Modok. Just one statement. He said, never do to people what only God can do to them. Ah, that was it. 
that was my deliverance i found out that i was becoming god to many people so i was taking god's responsibility in the lives of so many people and it was killing me and i said no rather than being god let me start leading men to god and it gave me freedom there are some of us who are always paying bills for people who are not serious you give them twenty thousand, they go and destroy it you give them hundred thousand for a business they throw it and you keep doing that is running the finances of your home you are being god to them lead them to god teach them the principles give them access to responsibility rise up on your feet let's pray hallelujah we're just going to have three prayer points i'm going to give us the next five minutes i'd like you to blast in tongues we're going to pray the secrets of the kingdom like bishop oyedeko will say that has been responsible for producing stars in the kingdom life is not guesswork stop guessing koinonia stop guessing you can walk circumspectly by knowledge by knowledge by knowledge lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues pray in the spirit pray pray your ignorance away pray your doubts away pray your way to the realm of uncommon exploit pray your way to the realm of enviable greatness pray your way pray the secrets of the kingdom pray the secrets of the kingdom the secrets of the kingdom but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me you're my glory you're the lifter up of my head only thou O oh Lord had a shield for me my glory you're the lifter up of my head but thou oh lord had a shield for me you're my glory you're the lifter up of my head but thou oh lord but thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. You're my glory. You're the lifter of my head. Hallelujah. Surrender. There is nothing in my life today, nothing in my life today that I cannot give to God. Oh, if I'm lying, may he forgive me. But there is nothing in my life. Koinonia will close down if God says this is the last service. It will close down never to open again forever. Reputation, nonsense. No. Never leave where fame met you. Never leave where lifting met you. If it met you on your knees, remain there. Even when you rise. Don't let men clap you into your doom and destruction. David was dancing before the Lord undignified and his foolish wife Saul's daughter said why are you falling your hand paraphrasing why are, do you not know you are now royalty you are still behaving as if you are a shepherd and he said I'm dancing before the God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me so that he will not take it from me and give another listen to me 
when you die to yourself all of these mundane things i am apostle you just called me joshua very very long time <laughs> hallelujah how am i supposed to behave fly I was nowhere when he found me oh I was nowhere when he found me oh thank God for your presence but I will remain where you met me I will remain where you had my teachings I will remain where you saw the miracles hold on to the four horns of the earth. don't be embarrassed about your death let everybody who comes let them fly from london from us and meet you still at the place of death you may be inside a jeep but still be dead you may be inside a five-star hotel but still be dead the pressure from your company is about to eat you up because it is still your own you see owners take responsibility stewards only maintain while owners take responsibility when you own things in this kingdom you are responsible for keeping it are we blessed you're a minister of the gospel here please listen if your desire is to be a superstar to shine another apostle <laughs> let me advise you very early in the name of jesus and in the name of honesty return back to the secret place and flog it out this night with destiny the secret to fame is to forget about it focus on his presence focus on his presence don't be ashamed to let men know he took you from nothing it's not weakness it's not it, it, you are not insulting yourself no Are we blessed? I marvel at the wonder-working power of God. Literally every day, I see the mighty things that God is doing in and through the lives of people. I am humbled and broken. Sometimes I look at myself and I said, oh dear, oh dear, what God can do with people who die. Death is the price for life. Death is the price for life this is the first you want to be great in this kingdom you want to last you want to be exalted i am telling you go back and flog it with god enter a covenant with god and say no matter how great you lift me i will lift you while people are lifting me you must be the highest it will never be about me thank god for the applauds thank god for the good speaking thank god for all of the great things god is doing around the world but in the name of jesus as an individual and as a ministry may we never get to a point where we push jesus out and we're just holding church but jesus is not there we are doing ministry but he's not there he remains the epicenter the focal point of all that we do let joshua selman go if Jesus remains, we are still intact. Let fame go. If Jesus remains, we are still intact. But let everything remain. If Jesus goes, we are in trouble. Is someone learning now? Yes. I show you why you are not seeing spiritual power. Why certain levels of grace. I know you are fasting for 10 days. You are fasting for 50 days. But already competitive jealousy is the motivation for the fast. You are still alive. You will not find power that way. You want to just speak? May your life change. And people's lives change? It doesn't happen like that. God is not a herbalist. He's not a magician. There are mysteries in this kingdom. This is why men wonder when God continues to lift us. And then they wonder, is it that you don't like fame? You are doing as if you are not enjoying this thing. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. 
that you be praised my one desire is that you be praised that you be praised listen let me tell you you have not seen prosperity till you die you have not seen lifting till you die when you really die you will lay up gold as dust you will not know what to do with it all this clamor people are looking for believe me see i tell you this i don't mean to insult your pedigree there are very successful and great people here but i submit to you in the name of jesus and in the name of honesty i have tasted of honor i have tasted of lifting i have stood before kings the person talking to you is not an ignorant person i count it but dung for the excellency of his presence when you die to yourself god will take somebody's prayer request and give you as a gift what people are chasing after now forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you and now forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you one more time I'll forever be chasing after you I'll be chasing after you. You see, I've had the privilege and honor of meeting extremely successful people. Some of them seated here respectfully. And you know the character of exceptional people by the level of humility in their lives. You will almost always confuse them. It is those who don't have anything that make a lot of noise and misbehave. You will see someone who owns estates, owns all kinds of things, and yet a humility almost to a fault. I remember many, many years ago in this city, very interesting story. A dear man I respect so much, he took me somewhere to go and bab. That was the first time in my life I was going to be paying that kind of money or it to be paid on my behalf for babbing. I wanted to say, what is it about the babbing? I mean, give me the clipper. I can bab. How many? What is on my head? For that kind of amount. I won't tell you how much. Ah, boy, it's an amount. You must fear God to forget about it. <laughs> for a haircut? very wonderful executive place and i saw a woman who was moving around trying to find out she would see pieces of paper papers and pick it on the ground and do a lot of things i was almost saying what a diligent staff and someone tapped me and said don't say that that's the owner of the place i said uh huh that's how you know you can see someone who owns a mega restaurant chains of restaurants all across the continent oh you don't have this there's no water just a moment and they will run and bring it because they are focused on impact not a name you have a choice focus on your reputation or focus on genuine results genuine kingdom results Please lay your hand on your head and pray and cry in one minute. Father, take away everything that makes me alive in the flesh. Let there be that spiritual circumcision. In the name of Jesus, you watching online, make sure you are following. Pray. I want to engage this law in my life. Absolute surrender. Prune my motif. Prune my motivation. Prune my motif. Prune my motivation. All I desire is Jesus revealed. All I desire is Jesus glorified. In my promotion, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. In my being anointed, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. In my being famous, Jesus revealed. Jesus glorified. Shalakatu siyakata. 
enter a covenant with God. Lord, as you lift me, you are lifted in my life. As you raise me, you are raised in my life. As you promote me, you are promoted in my life. I have no agenda to make a name for myself. My pursuit is not for self-aggrandizement. It is for your kingdom. hallelujah I submit to you in the name of Jesus sincerely this is my one agenda at the back of everything that I do at the back of everything that I seek is you that I see is you that I see At the center of it all, it's you that I see, it's you that I see. That must become your desire. Why are you looking for that job? Why are you seeking to be a billionaire? There's nothing wrong with those things in themselves. God is not interested in those things. He wants to know what is the motive. Even those who practice occultism, these native doctors and these sorcerers who ask them, you want money? I can give you money. But the condition is that there has to be an allegiance. That's what they want. Satan came to Jesus, your Jesus, and said, I will give you everything. Just bow to me. That's what I want. I don't want the money. What does Satan do with money? Listen to me. Dear people of God, there are levels of liftings there are levels of influence there are levels of honor we are yet to tap into the way up is to go down that's how jesus taught us the bible says he that ascended he first descended are we blessed this is a principle i've learned one of the mysteries that the lord gave to me one time the lord spoke to me and he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you and i vowed that for the rest of my life i will let jesus be revealed in my life he's the mystery behind the results that you see in this ministry he came to nicodemus by night and says rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god for no man can do these things these results you see it is not within the power of a man to do it i know that sometimes we men of god we like to take the glory and to shine and make it look as if it's our intellect is a lie this is the lord's doing that is why it is marvelous in our sight men cannot go that far in their strength So for your business, forget about the issue of business now. Forget about the issue of fame. Forget about the issue of lifting. Just focus on him and say, Lord, purify my heart sincerely. I confess that somewhere along the lines of my pursuit, I've been motivated by other things. Don't feel guilty. This is why you are in the house of God. I saw that man buy a Jeep and something within me said you are not a failure he was your classmate make sure you get it too i saw my contemporary in ministry demonstrating superior dimensions of power and then i went to fast and said lord don't embarrass me all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted if we stop here tonight 
you go back with this understanding and pray and God will tell you this for some of you this is the one is not the devil limiting your rising is that God knows if you rise without hearing this message you will be a disaster first to yourself because no eye has seen no ear has heard let me tell you if it's money you are looking for the God in heaven can daze you in a way that you will sit down and look at money and not know what to do with it believe me as I'm saying it now, some of you are saying, ah, God, you will not give you, you will not answer that prayer until that circumcision happens. Yes, sir. Hmm. That God can make any demand in your life and your answer is yes, sir. Give me the car. It was yours from the beginning. Give me the house, it was yours from the beginning. Give me the ministry, it was yours. Give me the reputation. I'm only representing your reputation. The reason why you can trust the bank with your money is because of ease of withdrawal. When you go to withdraw, there's no stories. God is only able to trust you to the degree to which he can have it back without complaint. Can he give you greatness and fame and make demand? Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son whom thou lovest. After 25 years of mockery. Let me tell you this. Honestly, if it is God you want to do business with, no matter how you pray and fast, the litmus test of death must happen to you. Must. is a non-negotiable condition. If it is greatness in this kingdom you seek, there will be a demand something that is so alive in your life must die one day take Isaac offer him as a bond offering I'm not talking money here and Abraham rose up early do you know what that meant to Abraham's family life what was he going to tell his wife what were the newspapers imagine as a journalist interpret what happened in our contemporary world today a very notable prophet of God sacrifices his son that's the caption one million likes one million shares madman commentaries will come from several places the next one month will be the stories of people yet Abraham said I'm willing to risk my reputation that far Romans chapter 4 tells us his contemplations even though he was crying his plan was to kill Isaac and beg God to bring him back to life you read it is in Romans chapter 4 do you know how oil oil that we use for the anointing I hope you know it comes out of olive and it does not just you don't just pluck olive and then oil comes out of it find out how oil is made you have to crush the olive you pass it through a threshing floor or some kind of crushing system and while you look at that olive being crushed you don't even pity it because of the pain you know the end product and out of that crushing oil you want the anointing to heal the sick genuinely not fake miracles you want the anointing to prophesy you want superior grace it won't just come by dropping an offering and hands laid on you. No, sir. There are wells in this kingdom that must be dug through hunger, through sacrifice, and through death. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yahweh. Yahweh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very quickly, let's make progress. Mystery number two. Shilama Subra Haskadiba Lakatusiata. I won't dwell so much here because we've dealt with it. The second mystery that controls results in this kingdom is called the law of the mind, the law of mental transformation. The law of mental transformation 
very powerful spiritual law your life will always be a reflection of your mindset the recommendation that is applicable to us it says go and borrow vessels you don't need to borrow oil but borrow vessels borrow not a few and the bible says she gathered vessels and then he said you now shut the door and begin to empty it and then when she emptied it what happened the moment the vessels were expanding the oil started expanding and the bible says and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped flowing i want to lift you but your mindset is too small for your prayer request if i really answer that prayer you don't have the capacity you see every time people receive more than what their mindset and their hands can hold they waste it and they abuse it the miracle of multiplying five loaf and two fish taught us a lesson these guys were hungry and when multiplication started happening without management multiplication without management led to wastage and they all left and jesus said oh dear mankind here is the lesson go and gather the crumbs so there were baskets to put that crumbs in and when they gathered it it was 12 basket full of wastage if you pour water in a cup it is only the size of the cup you you see that now the size of the cup water will be filled just to that level and every other thing will be a waste so god wants to lift you but in your mind your mind cannot hold more than certain levels of leadership more than certain levels of expansion you may be a pastor and you are saying lord i need you to bless me with members and he says they are all over there are over 7.2 billion people on earth i can bring as many but do you have the enlightenment and the transformation to manage what you are praying for that's why the bible says god answers what we ask or think your mind is a prayer warrior too when your mouth stops praying your mind continues that prayer so when your mouth is saying lord lift me your mindset says lord forget about that lifting i am not ready for it yet both your mouth and your mind are prayer warriors now you see most times in church we don't teach this because it doesn't seem to look very spiritual so we downplay it and we say you just continue to pray and we have people who continue to pray they study scripture and yet they never rise to notable points of influence they are not represented in anything superior i made a vow and a covenant with god that i would never raise a people who are just spiritually accurate spiritually alive I believe in influence and influence happens through transformed mindsets through renewal of the mind are we together now the bible says they limited god psalm 78 i believe verse 41 that they limited the holy one in the wilderness as mighty as god is men can limit him they limited the holy one could it be that your business can expand more than you have seen could it be that your ministry can expand? You know, I, I told you at the inaugural service of Koinonia, when the Lord spoke to me about coming to Abuja and all of that, I looked at it and I said, well, Lord, that's all right. And he made me to buy the map of Abuja, the map of Nigeria, the map of Africa, and the map of the world. Till today, they are on my table. I think something like that. And I looked at Abuja in the map and it became very small just six local governments i said i'm well able it became small not small to demean it but i said there is nothing complicated about doing ministry i said it sincerely it would have sounded like arrogance but my mind was receiving it hmm. i believe in the power of a transformed mind your mind is the authorized usher that leads your body to your tomorrow anywhere your mind has not entered the gate will not be open for your body to enter you don't have to fake any living no there's no point faking it your mind does not need a visa to travel with the spirit 
your mind does not need visa stamped on any passport it can travel while your body is still where it is and go and verify that that tomorrow is there it will come back and usher your body to that realm it's true the mind of Christ superior belief systems listen you have to conquer the spirit of smallness not in a competitive way we already spoke about the law of surrender but small things you do a business you are just thinking of your family members very subsistent living you, he says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed God is giving you a vision to have a bank and you are saying no no it's not for us oh dear if your mind defeats you you are defeated completely completely the miracle of a transformed mind is a real miracle you have to be convinced that God is able I can do all things it's a superior thinking Fathers like Bishop David Oyedipko will call it a far above mentality. I've been exalted. Don't let people bully you. We live in a society where people can intimidate you. They look at your shoe and say your shoe is cheap, your dress is cheap. And they make you feel stupid for going through the law of process. Find strength. Your mind is ahead of your body already. Someday, when your body now wears what your mind is wearing, you will see the difference. Do not be ashamed of your journey tomorrow. Don't try to fake anything with honor. See, success is not what you pursue. Success is what you attract by who you are becoming. More than what you do. You attract success by growth. Sustainable success is attracted by growth. Not just by doing things. When you have grown, almost anything can prosper in your hand. Are you blessed the law of mental transformation when I learned this I became a student of transformation till the day I see his face I have gathered materials I continue to invest in my mind because I don't want to be limited there is a generation that is depending on your transformation you cannot afford to be small all these all these childish things we do around you just find someone's car you go and lie down on it they will arrest you one day that's not how to grow hello please don't feel bad but that's not how to grow faith is not foolishness many things that we do in the name of faith that's not faith why fake something that can be real listen I will always give this analogy. Can you imagine someone who is trying to steal a piece of meat in a pot? And just when he's stealing it, they caught him and said it was your own. The meal was prepared for you. Now imagine how stupid you will feel stealing what is your own. The Bible says all things are yours. Why fake it? It's your inheritance. It's your destiny already. This is not mere motivation. It's true. He that cometh from above is above all. The Bible says to set your mind and your heart on the things above and not things of the earth. There are things I believe about God. There are things I believe about life. You carry a failure mentality, no matter what kind of prayer is prayed on you, you will fail. I assure you, you will fail. And you will feed your mind back and say, I knew it and you were right. listen to me i know that there are many people here who aspire to do great things for the kingdom god is not against your greatness he says i will increase your greatness and comfort you round about god is about making us great but listen to me the key is not running around trying to do things settle down and build your mind apostle i don't have capital all i know is god will give me money leave the issue of money the problem is not money the problem is to search for knowledge listen when you start growing in your mind 
there are some clothes you are wearing that must run away from you because that mindset will drive them away it's not about pride or humility whether you like it or not your there are names in your contact that will start going away when your mind is growing and others will start coming because the level of your transition does not allow to still have those physical conditions if our father in the lord baba deboy comes to stand here now and tells you ah something happened and my car spoiled some of you who would never give your relatives money for anything immediately right now with one phone call there will be cars lined up as if this is a car stand why because his level of transformation does not allow him to beg at that level again he has no this is a law where is the first phone you bought you can't even remember and you can't remember giving it out your mindset as it was transformed it became incorrect to still hold that kind of phone now i'm not saying holding an expensive phone is necessarily a proof of transformation just as an analogy have you seen someone who sits in a business class you know he's not supposed to be there everything around his life says you are not yet here you are sitting in a business class your shoe is betraying you your you don't know anybody there you don't have relationships that support that level of result it's a physical reality you have not yet arrived in you are holding a rubber ring life will push you back to where your mindset really makes you but when you grow ah, i wish i were not the one teaching this but it is true listen from that one room you can start growing you are learning what is the mentality of great people what does it take to have a great ministry what is the mentality of uncommon leaders not what is their results don't go around admiring people's results and laying on your hands and just claiming claim their mindset you don't need to forget about the result if the mindset is yours the signs that follow that mindset will come listen there are some of you the mindset you have you will never be able to cross 1 million in your account even if they give you 10 million 9 million would disappear mysteriously through carelessness through whatever and reduce you back to that realm because that is the realm your mind can take believe me every ministry expands to reflect the mindset of the leaders there every business expands to reflect the mindset of the leaders every home expands to reflect the mindset of the parents every nation expands to reflect the mindset of their leaders Singapore was turned from a third world nation to a first world nation not because something came from heaven and landed there superior ideas Dubai was turned into a heaven yes they've not given their life to christ in as much as we know but they are living on heaven in heaven now as far as paradise is concerned on earth someone can sit down and see a whole sea and yet in it he's seen something else ah, may god give us the miracle of superior belief systems in the name of jesus christ three keys to transit in mentally number one exposure exposure is a powerful blessing exposure is a double-edged sword it can kill and it can make there is a kind of exposure that will sorry to use that word it will rape your mindset you can be exposed wrongly and from that day you will never be patient towards life again but there is a correct exposure what is exposure broadening your horizon opening you up to the possibilities that exist beyond your frame of reference exposure until you watch a miracle if you watch somebody rise from a wheelchair in front of you you will not doubt it again sometimes god lifts us by taking us to places even though we are not really ready for it he keeps you there and you don't know what is happening to you till you leave that place you will be angry with where you are going back to that's a miracle and you make up your mind that in the name of jesus i won't be at this level again jesus was born in nazareth 
but he refused to allow Nazareth to live in him. At age 12, when his contemporary teenagers were running up and down, he was investing in his mind, even though he was the son of God. As a result, in three years, he took the world and said, I'm done, and levitated with honor back to heaven. Africa, we must wake up. The problem is not lack of mineral resources. The problem is not only leadership. Leadership is there. But more than leadership, we are victims of our thinking. The many years of servitude has done something to us. The color of your skin does not have an effect on your mind. Your background and where you come from does not have an effect on your mind there are no second-class citizens on earth except you make for yourself he that cometh from above the moment you receive Jesus you are born into a superior class of living this is a fact please make up your mind that you will not be small again make up your mind that you will not be small that what my father did not give me my children will eat it where i could not go you can't transfer the same mediocrity to your children it's okay that okay those who came before you could not go that far don't keep giving flimsy excuses while life is passing you and it does not come by hustling hustling is a demonic strategy work circumspectly as wives hustling is why people don't give god the glory the Bible says, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over a city. He said the watchmen watch it, but in vain. It is vain to wake up early in the morning, to sleep late in the night, only to eat the bread of sorrow, but he gives his beloved sleep. We have systems of advantage in this kingdom. We are not left alone. The favor of God is there. The capacity to restore is there. The gift of man, there. The ministry of the Holy Spirit showing you what to do part time. Shout, I cannot fail. Please say it, I cannot fail. I reject failure. Now, if you confess like that and don't contend for transformation, you will soon be angry with what you are saying because it will remain empty talk for a very long time. There are people who have done it for many years. Oh, I will not fail, yet they keep going down. Confession is powerful, but it's not the only key to the success equation. Content for transformation. More than the clothes you buy, invest in your mind. Buy materials, superior materials. Technology has made it very easy for transformation. With data of next to nothing, you can settle down and watch videos and materials that, that are consistent with scripture that edify you get all my teachings on them on mindsets they are free get them go online search for them they are free let the holy spirit do a work you have to understand how the mind thinks i'm sorry to say it but secular education school does not teach people how to think no achievement is a science there are exact equations that produce achievement. Results, you must sustain the ability to replenish. And here's where it lies. So you don't fear your success. I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that the results that we see and we rejoice with, it is ultimately God's doing, but he's given keys. There is no fear in these results because it will remain so. It did not come by magic. It did not come by mistake. It can be replicated anywhere in the world. And it is true. You only fear when your result came by luck. When it comes by knowledge, knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom, you can find rest. Listen, like Abraham, he says, from where thou art, lift up your eyes. I'm speaking to someone by the spirit, from where you are, not where you want to be, from where you are. You can make up your mind. Dr. Miles Munro, my eternally revered mentor, changed my life radically. Was one of the first people the Lord began to use to change my belief system. I love him even in death. Bless his soul. I heard his story. 
how that he grew up in a family of how many people and they would look from their room and they could see the stars that was the level of the poverty and he made up his mind that things would not be this way but empty talk does not lead to results he began to contend for transformation by the truth more than clothes by the truth are we together Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 verse 8 Philippians 4 verse 8 finally brethren finally koinonia whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just please look up whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise think on these things i never go for a meeting wondering will the power of god move will the sick be healed no 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 i have a mentality i never go alone i never go alone though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death thou art with me divine presence is a secret i know that his power his divine power i never come for a meeting wondering will people be blessed we're talking the power of the holy ghost here and the lord walking with them confirming the words with signs following there will never be a week where there is no testimony here it's impossible god must bear witness Walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. I'm walking in power, walking in miracles, I live a life of favor. It's not a Pentecostal song, it is truth from scripture. The Bible says a man of honor who does not know will die like a beast in the field. Knowing who you are is not being aggressive and insulting people around. No. That's insecurity. There is a settled confidence. I'm walking in power walking in miracles i expect favor every day every day honestly i really do i expect favor please sit down we have to rush so you must trust god for grace write two scriptures down you can read them when you get home very quickly genesis chapter 1 from verse 1 to 7 the key verse is verse 5 genesis chapter 11 11 i meant to say genesis 11. just write it and then you go and study at home but this was the story of nimrod kush building that tower whose top will reach the heavens the bible says verse 4 since you've projected it let's just look at 4 and 5 quickly the bible says nimrod he began to market this idea it started with an idea let us build a city whose top may reach the heavens let us make a name for ourselves lest we be scattered on earth look what happened in the realm of the spirit verse 5 while nimrod was busy working on their minds the bible says the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men have finished building 
once their mindset received it god saw a building rising in the spirit and he came to say what is they've not started building on the ground but their mindset was receiving it everything in life is built twice it is first built in your mind then it is built physically whatever is built physically and not built in your mind you will lose it but destroy anything physical if it's built in your mind the law says it must be rebuilt it's why wealthy people may go down they may have a season of some catastrophic events financially and otherwise and you see them smiling you are even crying for them and yet they are smiling they who are the victims because they know that they not only sustain the ability to be fruitful they have the ability to replenish you will only fear your results when you do not know the laws that produce it watch this i will always like to use people who cook imagine with me for a moment that you were to go and serve guests and while you were preparing the meal something happened and then everything just poured completely on the floor and then they give you two more hours or three more hours you will not be afraid again because you can still go back to the kitchen once the ingredients are there and you are the one who truly cooked it's trouble if you just bought it somewhere and the place is closed then you are in trouble but if you were the one who prepared it you can go back with confidence and even use the anger to make a better version of that thing and say what i forgot to add yesterday as i'm coming back now i'm adding it there law number three are you getting blessed the third mystery in this kingdom that has been responsible for the uncommon extraordinary results of the saints is called the law of mastery and competence the law of mastery the law of competence write it down please Proverbs 18 and verse 16. A man's gift maketh room for him, and the Bible leaves an assurance that the gift, like an usher, can bring him before great men. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men listen to me it is powerful to be valuable you know what it means to be valuable to be valuable means that you sustain the ability to provide solutions that are needed and useful as far as the context of a civilization is concerned listen carefully not just the ability to provide solutions the solutions must be needed and they must be useful with respect to that civilization you are considered valuable to the degree to which your life and your skills provide solutions as a man of God I'm providing a solution the solution may be spiritual in context but it is still a solution number one I'm connecting you to faith number two I'm using the agency of the Word of God as a reference to transform your thinking your thinking now being transformed will change your life I'm standing in partnership with the Holy Spirit to provide supernatural solutions healings miracles signs and wonders that is value many believers are just waiting for some magic to happen as far as their relevance is concerned let me tell you this men will only come to your light not to you if you are not carrying anything of value nobody will look for you gentiles don't come to you they come to your light let me tell you why you are alone you are alone because there is nothing notable coming out of you that is commanding the attention of men value is powerful You must have something to offer listen the table of greatness was so designed that you don't just go there and shift a chair and sit down 
the condition to join the great to sit on that table is that you first provide your value then that value is vetted there is a threshold level of competence you must attain in order to be granted a seat with the great being valuable as powerful as it is is not enough the highest position in every organization is for masters competence is a promoter it can lift you beyond your background it can lift you beyond your limitations it's a kind of music called music of the masters many of you have listened to it those guys have mastered the art of not failing when they sit down and they are playing they have come to a point where they are one with what they are doing they are not hoping they are right oh you must trust god to be a master at something nobody will come and indefinitely be loyal to you for nothing no when you study leadership there is a dimension of leadership that comes by results people want to see results they love you but they love themselves too they want to see genuine replicable consistent results if you're a man of God you must make up your mind that I will be competent I will be competent in ministry word delivery excellent prayer life excellent ethics of ministry administration and managerial intelligence excellent refuse to be small value is powerful when I learned this I began to rejoice I found my way out of mediocrity I found my way out of jealousy I found my way out of competition mastery lifts you to such a pedestal in life you are so distinguished it will look like life is flattering you but it's true let me tell you this I learned this and for the purpose of this discussion tonight I want you to write it down that the kingdom of God operates based on a reward system the kingdom of God operates based on a reward system and there is an auxiliary law that is tied to the law of competence the law of value the law of mastery I want to quote it for you so that you have it down and I pray that it will contribute to your lifting and your rising are you ready that the rewards that we have in life the rewards that we have in life is directly proportional to three things the rewards that we have in life is directly proportional to three things number one the need or the demand for what you do your rewards our rewards in life is directly proportional to number one the need or the demand for what we do number two our ability or proficiency to do what we do this is where skill and excellence comes in your ability to do what you do and then number three the difficulty in replacing you I come again our rewards in life financial honor whatever kind of reward whether financial or psychic whatever kind of reward will always be in exact ratio in exact proportion to number one the demand or the need for what you do number two your ability to do what you do number three the difficulty in replacing you when there are easy replacements for you you will never go far in life this is not from a competitive standpoint but you must make up your mind to be exceptional it is true that no man is indispensable but make it difficult to find an alternative to you and the company will retain you begging i assure you as much as they are downsizing people in this nation there are people who will not spend one month without a job they are too competent for that kind of condition they literally are the brains behind many corporations many years ago I used to know a gentleman he was working three jobs and he was only working three or four times a week 
He used to live in Kaduna State, but he worked in Lagos and the company would fly him every week. He was an IT consultant. If he coughs, I think they will buy him a, a pharmacy, not a drug. Listen, you must be so valuable and you must be so competent. There is a measure of honor that only comes to masters. I made up my mind and you've heard me say it. I don't have an ambition to learn and know everything and to be exceptional in everything. But in the areas where God has called me, I made a covenant with myself and my life that I will stretch myself to a point of uncanny mastery in ministry, in leadership. Every grace that is available for signs and wonders, I will contend for it by light. Thank God for that which is given me, but I will not rest. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. Listen, you are a music, you are a, you are a worshiper, you are a music artist. Don't just sing and be looking for those who know you to keep recycling you around. A day will come they will be tired of you because there will be too many alternatives. You must trust God for illumination. You must trust God for mastery. Learn at the feet of masters. Rise to a point where your songs don't die. You are a businessman. Don't say I'm doing business. They are not patronizing me. Oh, I'm a chef. Who can place a demand for you? Until you serve kings, you cannot receive the reward of kings. If koinonia only provides value to people who are outside of politics and governance and business, respectfully speaking, and with every sense of responsibility, then you will never be able to mentor kings and bless people. The truths that are being dished out from here must be such that all and sundry can be benefactors of it. Truths that are consistent with scripture, proven by the life of exceptional people, exceptionally com communicated, backed up by the power of the Holy Ghost, like fire into your spirit. You carry that truth and you can run with it. Competence. Make up your mind to be competent in the name of Jesus. You're a man of God. Make up your mind to be competent. One headache per year. You are not, you'll be ready for empty pews. Not in the times that we live in. You want to come and sing and you say, don't worry. Don't worry about the wordings. Or is it, is it the melody? Just focus on the wordings. Then recite a poem. Recite a poem. Are we together? Yes, I know that we all start gradually, but make up your mind. Can I tell you this? Don't come and stand in front of the stage when you are not prepared. You can relax with honor. Don't embarrass yourself. Relax with honor and train and train and make that mistake. The stage is not for training. It's in you, Lord. It's in you, Lord. We know there's more that's found in you. Apostle, I'm tired of this level. Then rise through competence. I'm tired of this level. Rise to serve kings. I'm tired of this level as a man of God. The key is not to ask people to come to listen to you. The mere fact, listen, a mango tree does not call you. It just produces fruits big and juicy a few months you pass the same tree as if you didn't see it now look at the skill you have to employ because of the, the the gift on it you use stones you use a rod you even climb it the tree never said you should be that desperate for it it only produced fruits i tell you why people are ignoring you there is nothing of there is nothing notable in your life you don't come to a tree that is not producing anything. Ask Jesus, your Jesus. Jesus came to a tree that had green leaves and no fruit. He didn't just advise it and say, next year, make sure that he cost it. That's what men will do when you attract men to your presence and you have nothing to offer. Before you ask men, come, make sure the table is ready. Let 
all things be ready before you call men for a feast don't call for a miracle service when you've not contended for the grace for healing when they are not healed they will say i'm not healed don't call people to teach and then you are sharing things and sharing things and they go back and use the truth you're communicating and there's no results in their lives there is nobody who lives what works at the instance of results results are magnetic they can keep men there keep them in your company not by telling lies the greatest way to market is to tell the truth you have no fear when it is truth nothing to hide nothing to stage manage it is true if i tell you god will lift you believe me he will lift you if i tell you god is is shifting you it will happen because if he did not say it i don't have any business repeating you are only afraid if you speak on your own please make up your mind that you're going to be competent believe us let us not bring reproach to the name of jesus let us go back and do our homework in music in business in politics in leadership buy the truth and sell it not hallelujah every time i finish a meeting like this when i go back home sincerely speaking maybe just rest refresh a bit i'm getting straight to my work as i'm preaching here right now i have my own assignments and i have things i'm doing I return from a meeting straight to this place and when i'm done not even my tiredness is an excuse there is a generation that is depending on my competence there are people on wheelchairs right now who are depending on my contending for that power it is more than what you want don't prophesy nonsense everything you say is not correct don't say it's just god testing me go back and do your homework your name is john no i'm israel you have two children no i have ten you are coming from Abuja, I'm coming from outside this country. That margin of error is too human. You can't blame God for it. I made up my mind that I will never stand before anybody in this life and be intimidated to a point of shame. I will be challenged. I will be provoked unto godliness but never that i stand before anyone i found out the difference between you and anyone is number one your level of enlightenment number two the relationships that come at that enlightened level number three the grace that is at work on your life that's what separates people anybody you ever admire this is what separates him from you can kings stand to applaud you can the great look at you and say i am impressed he behaves like us or can they show you the door and say go out there and never come back again joseph was prepared he knew he was ready to stand before pharaoh i'm sure when joseph was leaving the prison he looked at those who were there and said gentlemen i'm coming for you but no longer as a prisoner i know that when i meet the king it's impossible for the king to have this kind of competence before him and send me back to the prison and here's how he did it he said let the king search for a man it's a diplomatic way of saying i dare you search the entire egypt if you will find a man you've been here sweating for hours and they brought me out of prison don't trivialize my value search for the entire egypt if you will find a man who will interpret your dream listen at the instance of competence without consulting with kingmakers and elders he became the prime minister so there are times that competence can compress time and in a moment enthrone you someone can look at you and without an interview just a five minutes conversation he says come and be the nigerian representative of my company come and be the african representative of my company and you are like it's a joke sorry sir are you joking and he says does it sound like i'm joking you have what i'm looking for do you have what the world is looking for 
do you have what the world is looking for there are consultants and specialists today that are being flown from us being flown from uk from india to come and perform surgical procedures on certain people why because they are masters there are authorities global authorities in certain fields before you go so far you have they have to vet what you are writing is that true no matter where you are if you want to be initiated to this realm of greatness you must pass through their tutelage they look at what you're saying and say no adjust this adjust that May you be a master. The level of mastery that drives shame from your life. That you have a restaurant that will make people come and sit down there as though they were bound with a spell. What is it about your food? I found a secret. Africa, we love superstition. God is a miracle worker, but he's not a magician. It will take competence to attract honor. It will take competence to attract the goodwill of people. Nobody will clap for you indefinitely for doing nothing. Your assignment, go back to the drawing board. Your assignment, create a drawing board if you do not have one. Don't clap for yourself for too long. You've heard me say it here, that no one claps for you for the same thing twice. When they clap for you once, that's enough for that realm. If you don't do anything higher, nobody will applaud you for it again. Are we blessed? I made up my mind to bring glory to Jesus through my life. Not just through my prayers, not just through my fasting, but through competence. That anywhere he would have me serve his purposes, any church I have the opportunity to minister in or here in Koinonia that by the grace of God I will never waste your two three four hours it will never be that you come for any Koinonia meeting and at the end of it you are frowning and say I just wasted my time I would have done something else it will be evil of me to come and waste your precious time many of you are veterans in business you are captains over many why will you come and sit down here for hours and then learn nothing and just jump around and laugh and share the grace that's not the God we serve by the grace of God you will never sit here and go back with regret no that whilst you sit down here quality life applicable information will come to you that is applicable both in your spiritual life and your secular environment and then the engracing from the spirit this is what makes it more than a lecture a lecture stops in the realm of your mind but there is an anointing an unction that backs every truth maybe i should say this as we prepare to round up many years ago the lord showed me a very very interesting revelation i was caught up in the realm of the spirit listen carefully and then i saw a very big door very giant gate and then in it it was made up of smaller doors and on every door a scripture was written i noticed it was that smaller doors were opening and closing opening and closing and every time they open light would just come from them and i wondered what i was seeing and i was saying lord what is this and then the lord told me every time you catch a revelation in scripture the grace dimension to defend that truth is that light that is released so any truth you cannot validate with your life is not yet a revelation to you no matter how long you have talked about it there is always grace given to the saints to defend the truths that we communicate and the lord walking with them confirming the word the word with signs following the law of absolute surrender the law of mental transformation the law of competence and mastery can you lend me 10 more minutes let's talk about the fourth law and then we pray very quickly the law of faith the fourth spiritual law that is responsible for the excelling of the saints in this kingdom is the law of faith mark 11 please from verse 22 to 24 just summarize it quickly and then we'll pray my spirit is fired up and Jesus answering saith unto them have faith in God original translation says have the faith 
of God. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. 24. Therefore, koinonia, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, hallelujah, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shall have them. Hebrews 11 says, now faith is the substance of things that I hope for. He calls it the evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things not seen. Please permit me to just use money for an example. Watch this. The evidence of things not seen. This is a hundred dollar bill. Please come. Watch this. He wants to buy, say, maybe he wants to buy this. Are we together now? And it is a hundred dollars. If I give him this, I didn't give him the book but I gave him the substance of what he's hoping for. This is the evidence that he can go to the shop and purchase it. Are we together now? This is what he wants to buy. It is not the money he wants. But the moment I gave him $100, he started smiling. It's as good as having it. Because he can go to the person, go to them that sell and buy. That's what the parable of the virgins. Once you have the ability to buy, them that sell will not hinder you. So, this is it. And he comes to the person who sells and drops this and picks this. So, this was not supposed to remain just as money. Are we together now? Eventually, I should see you holding this. If you hold this forever, something is wrong. You, it is either fake money or you don't know where to meet them that sell. The moment you hold this, you shouldn't just start jumping. Yes, rejoice that you have it, but don't stop there. Go to them that sell and exchange it for the real substance. So the Bible says faith is the substance of what you hope for. The evidence that although it is not here, I have the purchasing power to get it. Listen. The house is not yet there but I have the substance this is the evidence that it is going to be mine the lifting has not yet appeared but this is the evidence now in this kingdom the currency is the word of God this is it instead of giving you this mundane piece of paper that when you tear it, you cannot go to CBN and say, I was holding real money. It's gone. This is it. This is the instrument we use to purchase possibilities in this kingdom. Every time you find truth, it's like money being given to you. There is an exchange system in the realm of the spirit. You carry that truth. This mysteries I'm teaching you now is like dashing you money. Because you are soon going to carry these truths you are learning. There are them that sell. Don't worry, you will go to work tomorrow. You will go around and you will start seeing them that sell all around. Your destiny helpers are them that sell. The moment you meet them, you will exchange these mysteries for lifting, for favor. Everything in this kingdom is bought. But you must know the currencies that we used to buy with. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was with God in the beginning. John 1 says. It says. And without him. It says all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Listen to me. Very quickly, I ask for 10 minutes. Faith is based on two qualities of God. There are two major qualities of God that produce Bible faith. Number one, 
his integrity numbers 23 and verse 19 very quickly please numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 believers read with me ready one to read god is not a man uh-huh neither the son of man that he should repent had he said and shall he not do it or had he spoken and shall he not make it good please look up the bible says god is not a man there is a weakness in all men we lie You don't lie because you are bad. You lie because you are human. So he says, God is not a man that he should lie. He became a man, but he is not a man. If God is a man, he must worship who created him. He is not a man. He became a man. Are we together? The Bible says when God says a thing, you can trust him. He will make it good. Everybody say integrity. The word integrity comes from the word integer, sameness. As within, so without. Sameness. When you say God is a God of integrity, that means there is consistency, dependability. When he says, I will lift you, he will not turn tomorrow and say, no, I will change my mind. Provided the conditions that make for the delivery of that promise is met and kept, he is true to his word. So the first quality of God that Bible faith depends on is his integrity. You want to deal with someone you know will not play games with you. God does not do April Fool. No. When he tells you, I will lift you, he really means it. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass, the Bible declares, if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all his commandments which I command you this day. He says that the Lord will set thee on high above the nations of the earth. And then he says that all these blessings shall come on thee and shall overtake you. There is a condition. I'm the God of integrity. I am able to do that. God is dependable. He's a God of integrity. The first quality of God that Bible faith depends on is his integrity. You must have a revelation of God's integrity. When he sends you and tells you, I will be there with you, trust him. Trust him. Even when you do not see him, trust him. Are we together? Integrity. He does not change. When God speaks to me, I believe him. When he sent me to this city, he assured me of his divine presence and I believed him. I came because I believed him. Nobody signed any form and said, I'm coming. No. Faith. He said it. I believe. Where will the money come from for the bills? It will come through the voice that spoke where will the people to listen come from the word will bring them i know that god is a god of integrity you can trust him you can trust him i know that men have failed you they promised to do a they did b they promised to do x they did y but god is not like that when he says a thing he has the power to do it imagine the things he told you this year that this is your year of victory you must believe it is true imagine the thing he told you this year that when men say there is a casting down for you it will be that there is a lifting up you have to believe him he told you this year would not end with you crying like other years why are you now doubting his integrity God is not scratching his head, wondering how to defend his name in your life. He's the almighty God. He's able to do it. Number two, the second quality of God that our faith depends on is his ability. There are people that have integrity, but they do not have ability. I can help you, but sincerely, I don't have the money. He has integrity. And the person he's standing with will say it's true. He's like that. Honestly, if he has money, he will give you. So his integrity is not in doubt.
but there is no ability Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 now unto him who has ability he does not just have integrity listen carefully he has ability to do there are people who want to give you jobs they have integrity but they do not have ability there are people who want to lift you they will tell you just pray for me if i really become the director i will not let you suffer they have integrity but when it has to do with performance you need more than integrity you need ability god is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think and he does that according to the power that works in us everybody say god is able one more time prophesy say god is able don't be in doubt whether he can lift you apostle god said he will honor me where will the resources come from ask the raven where it got bread and came and fed elijah in the night this is god he can make anything out of anything so he has integrity and he has ability based on the awareness of his integrity and his ability you can now believe him what does it mean to believe him to count him as true then what do you do the next thing you do listen carefully listen carefully this is where many people miss it out believing is not faith believing is only part of the faith equation if all you do is believe you are not walking in faith just because you have rice does not mean you have fried rice rice is a major ingredient but not the only ingredient just because you have salt does not mean you have a well-prepared meal believing is only one of the equations to faith listen to me the foundation of bible faith hinging on god's integrity and his ability is the awareness of the promises and the instructions that your blessings are connected to the awareness of the promises the awareness of the instructions that your promises or your blessings are connected to here's how it works every commitment of god in the scripture there is a condition every blessing in scripture there is a condition a participatory condition that must be met your condition is not necessarily adding to what christ has done but it's a participatory condition if 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 you want to prosper find out the biblical conditions that make for prosperity subscribe to it with all your heart having this at the back of your mind that at the back end of your obedience is a god of integrity and the god of ability you only have the readiness to judge every disobedience when your obedience is complete now there's a lot of blind believing god in the body of christ and believing god for this and believing god for this you will keep jumping like that forever respectfully speaking now there are conditions the bible is full of prophecies the bible is full of principles the bible is full of promises when you walk through your garden of eden that's this bible you search for the things god said he would do and search for the conditions connected to them you want to prosper there are conditions attached you are only manifesting faith when number one you believe that god has integrity and ability then you find out the economic system of the kingdom the principles that make for the blessing of the saints then you obtain grace from god to walk in keeping with those conditions only when you act out in obedience is god committed to you are we together it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord. I read that scripture already. The Bible says, There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. The Bible says, A diligent hand shall be made fat. We just read it here that a valuable person will attract the attention of kings. The gift of a man. 
so don't sit down and say god prosper me he's saying you walk in keeping with the principles that release that dimension of the blessing when you walk in keeping with the principles connected to any blessing there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to stop you from entering that inheritance this is called the law of faith Are we together? We are going to pray. John 11 and 40. John 11 and 40. We have to close quickly and pray. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto you, that if thou shalt believe, you will see the glory of God. This is what confuses a lot of people. Just because Jesus said believe, you have to examine the word that was translated believe there. He did not just mean if you are aware that I'm able to do it. No, no. If you are convicted and then you act in keeping with the truths and the instructions that I give you, there is an assurance that you will see the glory of the Lord let me wrap up tonight then by defining faith this is my definition of faith that faith is the name given to the action that you take faith is the name given to the action that you take based on your conviction of who god is and the integrity of his word faith is the name given to the action not the conviction the action you take based on your conviction on who God is and the integrity of this person. Faith is the action you take as an obedient response to divine instructions and divine principles. Write that down. Faith is the action that you take based, you take to, what did I say now? It was from my mind. In response the action you take in response to divine instructions and divine principles is called faith one more time the action you take in response to divine principles and divine instructions if it be thou bid me come and he said come the action is called faith I will lift you I believe what are the conditions be diligent when you are diligent that diligence is called faith are we blessed I've shared with you tonight four kingdom mysteries please do not forget them I want you to listen to this teaching again and again you'll find it free on YouTube go to our page Koinonia Global a YouTube page you can listen again and again go through all our social media pages it's been broken down for you to listen again and learn faith comes by hearing and hearing and the hearing that produces understanding open up your heart by the grace of God next week we are going to finish up the remaining mysteries and you will hold them like keys and you can tell the gate of destiny I am ready open up open up open up I will last because I've surrendered everything I will not become mediocre because my belief systems are superior I will not be left out in life because I am competent and I am valuable and then I will not be a victim I'm not just a sociological being, a homo sapien. I relate with the divine through the law of faith. These are irrefutable keys to an excelling lifestyle. Please rise up on your feet. We're wrapping up. I'm on my way to better days. On my way to better days, status is changing, there's no more decline. I'm on my way to better days, prophesy. 
status is changing There's no more decline I'm on my way to better days I'm on my way On my way I'm on my way To better days I'm on my way On my way on my way to better days you're on your way on your way you're on your way to better days now that you know these things happy are you if you do them please turn it into a prayer lord the grace to apply my life to these mysteries I obtained from heaven. Please lift your voice and pray. The grace. The grace. The grace. We're wrapping up. Lift your voice and obtain grace from heaven. The grace to lay down the grace to sustain a superior belief system. The grace to mastery and competence. The grace to be valuable. The grace to live by faith. He says the just shall live by faith. I'll never be the same. Never be the same. The same. In the name of Jesus. Revealing Jesus. Bringing glory to his name. Exploits by the Spirit. Exploits through knowledge. Exploits through understanding. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. Listen, the Bible says the word is the seed, the parable of the sower. As soon as the word was sown, the Bible says Satan cometh immediately. Those that fall on good ground, he said, are those who understand, not just those who hear. I assure you, one day you will lock yourself at home. And you will stand before your mirror with tears coming down your face and say thank you this is a system of insurance this is a bailout system the cure to mediocrity the cure to a life of competition and jealousy you found your way i'd like you to obtain grace one more time and say lord grace to do grace to do i will do this i will do this i will practice it by the spirit i will practice it by the spirit it will cause my life to excel i will practice it by the spirit hallelujah praise the lord please lend me two minutes and as a body of believers here and following online i like us to lift up nigeria in a prayer in one minute we are responsible believers and the church has a role to play in the stability of any nation we are responsible leaders we can lend our voice to the heavens we must cry to God and say, Lord, help us. We humble ourselves and we ask for help. We have stretched our intellect. We've stretched what we know to do. We need divine strategies. Lift your voice and pray. Pray for the government. Pray for members of parliament. Declare peace upon our nation. Lend your voice in prayer. Lend your voice to prophesy. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It says they shall prosper that love you. Lord, grant peace. Peace to our children. Peace in Abuja. Peace in the north. Peace
peace in the south peace in the east peace in the west in the name of jesus let the voice of violence be far from our habitation we pray for wisdom direct our leaders in the name of jesus grant us selflessness to lead this nation with wisdom grant the grace to look beyond our personal benefits and lead a nation where peace and justice will reign in the name of jesus in the name of jesus very quickly you are here and you are saying apostle I want to hand over my entire life to Jesus I came to church because I was invited I came because there is a hunger and a longing in my heart for Jesus whether you are here in the main auditorium or all of the overflows down to the basement outside anywhere I know our time is gone but we cannot compromise on the mandate for the global harvest just two minutes for you wherever you are i'd like you to boldly leave your seat and come stand here it's my joy and my honor to leave to lead you to jesus you are saying apostle i gave my life to jesus christ but for some reason things have gone haywire in my life don't be ashamed don't wait for someone to come be the first to come take that bold step let's celebrate them as they come Koinonia, is this the best you can do for them? All those in the overflows, just walk to your screen. Just walk to your screen. You may not have the time to come to the main auditorium. All those in the overflows, down to the basement, outside, following online. I'd like you to connect as I lead God's people in prayer. If you're still joining them come quickly be bold come to Jesus hallelujah thank you thank you for making this very bold decision I'd like you to lift your right hand all of you here lift it to Jesus all in the overflow do same lift your hands to Jesus those following online in your room your office your car just watching from your device you can lift your hands right there Jesus is there I want you to pray this prayer loud say after me lord jesus you're joining them join them very quickly say lord jesus i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god tonight i have heard your word i surrender everything to you i receive forgiveness of sin i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare from tonight until forever i belong to jesus i am a child of god in jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you thank you for this once the bible declares that whosoever will come to you you will in no wise cast away they have come with hearts open they have come with hearts repentant I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for that which you have done. I commend them to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. That they be established, that they be grounded in righteousness. I pray that they will go forward ever and backward never. And according to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that God gives you a new beginning. In Jesus name I pray. Congratulations. Um, I want all of you to follow there's a gentleman waving a placard just waving to you please all of you follow them same with the overflows just follow them they will have a word with you and you'll be back to your seat koinonia celebrate them <laughs> hallelujah praise the name of the lord amen so let me advise very quickly please after service as much as possible do well to just exchange pleasantries as fast as you can and then do well to reach for your homes um, we close early today because we have to work with uh, the injunction, the curfew. As you know, we have curfew by 12 midnight and we do not want to keep both our precious members and the workers here 
late more than necessary and so i hope that you bear with us when and if the protocol department if they seem to cut away some of the people who may want to wait behind to see me i apologize i know that so many people may want to see me but please we may make it another time praise the name of the lord aside from a few of our guests and a few special cases as much as possible just go home rejoicing with what you have heard and the lord will bless you in the name of jesus christ are we good on that let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus I'll see you again bye